Okay, I think I'm ready. We'll find out, won't we, I guess. Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Good to be back. I uh, just needed a bit of a break this weekend. I said it might happen now and again. Uh, I'm definitely going to look after myself first. Um, chat broken. Oh, yeah, it's not showing, is it? Oh, that's a good start, isn't it? All right, let me uh, refresh the... Refresh. Hmm. Oh, that's a good start because that's all my alerts as well. Let me just go to the player me site. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, I'm going to be looking after myself primarily this year. So if I don't feel up to a stream, I'm just not going to do it. So that's mainly why I didn't do uh, Saturday. Just wasn't really feeling it at all. Um, I'm just filtering all the shit talk. Let me do a full overlay refresh. One sec. Let's try that. And try that as well. It should just work. I'm not sure why it's not. Maybe there's a... Maybe it's something to do with this stupid... Um, issue I was having with... Um, what's it called? With my, with my stuff as well. Uh, is, I mean, it's perfectly possible. It's kind of, it's the network. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work. Let me, I'm just going to try forcing an, an alert into it. Let me log into my side. Oh, I see not. That's weird. So yeah, anyway, so I just chilled out this weekend, uh, played a few games. Uh, I say played a few games. I played uh, Elden Ring um, and watched watched Shameless. That was about it, really. Getting into Elden Ring, actually. I, I was kind of a bit kind of dubious about it being, it being a, a, a Souls game by, by From Software. I was kind of a bit worried it would be like every other Souls game. I wouldn't be able to play it. But I think now I've got into it a bit more, I can kind of see the, the appeal. I still think it should have a, an easier mode on it. It is ridiculously hard, um, but it's I'm I'm having more fun than I have in any other from software game, so that's good. Right, I'm just gonna try and force an overlay uh, alert to appear. So let's see if this works. Uh, if I do that and that. This is a message from Spring Dream. Okay, that's working, but the chat is not working. That's interesting. Um, that is very interesting. I don't know why it would be doing that. The fact that it shows the alert but nothing else is, I don't know. I don't know what the issue is there. Has there been no chat at all on it? Or did it just go off? There hasn't been any chat at all. Okay. That is weird. Um, I don't know what to do because it should work. I'll tell you what, I can put some... Um, Hang on, let me just go into it. Maybe there's something I can do. No, I mean, that, that should be it. That should be all I need to do. Well, that's kind of frustrating. Um, well, I'll tell you what I can do. If I grab the old overlay, so let me just go back to the old overlay. Uh, so it's going to look a bit weird for a second. And I just copy that. Go back to the new one. I mean, it's not perfect, but it will do, I guess. Uh, and then if the other chat comes back, then I'll, I'll remove it again. 
but I mean, that should be, okay, I can't even see that. Let me, oh yeah, okay, it is showing. All right, okay, that's, at least we have something in there now. Uh, I don't know if the title's right. I think, oh God, what? <sighs> what a start. All right, so I'm going to drink some wine tonight because I just feel like it. That's the other thing I'm going to do as well. I'm just going to drink wine when I feel like it, not just because it's a weekend. Um, and tonight I'm drinking a much better. So it's a Malbec again. The last one I, I got was a Malbec, but it was a terrible, terrible Malbec. And that shouldn't put anybody off Malbec. Malbec is actually very nice. Um, if you get a decent one, but the one I got <laughs> was bloody awful. In fact, it's probably the worst one I've ever drank. Whereas this is actually quite nice. And this is um, Trivento. Um, I mean, it just says grown in the Andes foothills, but that doesn't really help me because I don't know anything about that. So. You might have noticed as well, I've made some small changes behind me as well. So the cat tree is no longer there. The cats are over to, to my left instead. A couple of reasons for that. One, the space behind me was very kind of underutilized. Um, whereas the space where the cat tree currently is was very uh, kind of, it was very cluttered and and bad. So what I've done is I've moved the, the shelving unit that was where the cats are now into my workshop, which is a much better kind of shelf unit for my workshop. Um, which Malbec was the ugly one? It was a uh, barefoot. I usually quite like the barefoot stuff. It's not that bad. It's cheap. It's a definitely a cheap brand, but that particular Malbec was horrible. I don't know if it was just a bad bottle or, or what. Possibly, I guess, but um, it was disgusting. I couldn't drink it. I couldn't drink it. It's been used for cooking bolognese and stuff now. So, uh, although it'll have to be thrown in a week or two, so. Um, yeah, so I moved. I moved the old shelf unit, which was like a cube kind of uh, modular shelf unit. Um, oh, some didn't work either. What is going on? Let me refresh the overlay again. The overlay is definitely working because I've heard um, I've heard the listen go off tonight. So it might just be. It could just be Twitch being really funny. So. Um, and and things like the SID requests go through the Twitch reward system, so it, there's a very good chance that it may just not be working. So I wouldn't waste too much on that tonight if it's not. Yeah, it seems like it's not working. It's probably the Twitch system having a having a failure, and it could be why the chat wasn't working properly through Player Me as well. Yeah. Okay. So just avoid the uh, avoid anything that's uh, a shimmer shilling, uh, anything that's a channel points uh, thing tonight. It's probably broken. Um, I'll start the quiz in a minute. But what I have done is I've, I've you probably can't see it actually. I'll just turn around there. So I bought one of these DVD shells that collectors use. I'm starting to put all my uh, PlayStation and Nintendo games on there. It's going to take me a while though. It's uh, it's not easy to. Um, it's not easy to uh, to fill them up, so that this thing will fit about six hundred DVDs in it, uh, and I'm going to put another one. So you can't see the one that I've put today, but there's going to be another one which you just about will be able to see in that corner. Um, so that, that's going to have another think, 160. So it's going to be like 760 PlayStation games behind me, and then I'm going to uh, the side of me to the right here, and going to have more uh, with my N64 and SNES games in. Uh, and my GBA games, but my GBA games all need boxes printing, so it's going to take forever. So, um, collection organization is hard, yeah. Well, I, I've not really been a collector before, so I, it's something kind of new to me. Um, I've always kind of make done with Everdrives and, and things like that, but I've decided that I'm actually gonna start collecting properly. I've got, I've got so many consoles, I really should spend some time to collect properly. I've got quite a lot of GBA games. Yeah. Oh, God, the alerts are not working. Doxter, thank you very much for the sub. Yeah, everything seems to be broken from um, Player Me and from Twitch at the moment. I don't know why. Uh, there's not really a lot I can do except maybe restart the stream, which uh, I'm not going to bother doing now. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start collecting. So I'm going to collect all the PlayStation games because I've got PlayStation 1 to 5. Uh, Famicom... Uh, rather than NES games, so I've got I've actually got some drawers uh, cassette 
cassette uh, tape holders for the for the Famicom stuff. But what I want to do is print some inserts for the the front, so you can see what the games are. It's really hard to see uh, the games uh, because there's no label on the top. And then I've got Universal game cases for Nintendo sixty four, Mega Drive, uh, and one more as well. Nintendo sixty four, Mega Drive, and SNES. So they're they're all going to go in. Um, in universal game cases, which I bought a shitload of uh, the other day, so we're going to start doing those. All right, let me let me start the races. Let's see if this actually works. There's God knows. I'll try and add points. I'm not even guaranteed that this is going to work. Um, we shall see. Ah, oh, the points worked. Okay. There was an update to OBS, and they said, "Do not update. You'll have problems from today." I haven't tried myself, but it could be the issue. I did update um, last week, I think. Yeah, I remember them saying something like that. That's probably what it is, actually. Okay, that's good. So at least no amount of um, no amount of kind of restart in the stream is going to fix that. Okay, okay, fine. What I did was get cheaper protectors and put label stickers on the sign. Show. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm considering putting some labels on the top of them. But what I've got is I've got some nice uh, vintage cassette drawers. Uh, the 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 Famicom cartridges are exactly the same size as a cassette tape. Um, uh, case basically uh, so if you've got something that will take cassette tapes it will fit famicoms in it perfectly so um so what i'm doing is i'm each drawer will fit 11 of those well it actually fits 12 but i've had to put a blocker on the back to stop them falling inside so so i 3d printed some little blocks that go on the back so each drawer fits 11 and i've got 12 drawers uh, but what i'm going to do is on the front of each drawer i'm going to put a little uh, insert card like a little card uh nice laser printed card with nice kind of graphics on it just with the games names on them as well so they'll all be in alphabetical order as well so uh, hopefully that should help yeah they did call the family yeah, cassette still yeah i mean it's, it's crazy they are exactly the same size so like I, I put it in the in the cassette um let me start the races as well for everybody else while i while i witter on uh when you put them in the in the cassette drawers, they fit perfectly. There's almost no gap, so um, it's it's almost as if they deliberately designed them to be that size. Again, a Famicom car part is a pain. I haven't tried that yet, actually. I haven't tried that yet. To be honest, I don't even know what half of my Famicom carts are. There, I mean, I, I can tell you what the games do, but I don't know what the games are called because the games are in. Japanese and they're not games that I saw over here. They're they're unique to Japan, and the the labels do not help at all. Because in terms of kind of abstract label art, the Japanese were just masters of it. There are some really really weird covers that just make no sense whatsoever. Okay, right. Okay. Um... Is the quiz working? I, I guess the quiz is kind of working as well. Mailstorm, yeah. So I guess anything that uses my um, my overlay stuff will work, but what's not going to work is the, um, the, the the stuff from Twitch and from Player Me. So I need to spend some time to fix that tomorrow. In fact, I'll make a big note of that. And I'll just have to keep my eye. Feel free to spam listen uh, if I miss a, miss an alert or anything like that because uh, they're just not working for me at the moment. So, um, last resort is I can always I can always roll back to the previous version of OBS. Maybe uh, it shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, yeah. Anyway, all right. I'm asking for Andy to abuse. He already does abuse it. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. He abuses it already. So. <laughs> okay, uh all right, let's let's get cracking then. Let's get, get a bit of wine in me. Actually, let me finish my lemonade from before. All right, now I can drink my wine. That is a much nicer Malbec. I mean it's crazy the difference between the two. I mean the one I the one, the one I drank last week just made my made me peel my gums back on me. It was horrible. 
All right, let's uh, let's crack on. Okay, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to fix some of the aim turret stuff. So let's just remind ourselves where we're at and what the problems are. Uh, I think we just need to do a bit of debugging. I think for the most part, the uh, the basic kind of logic behind the, the the shooting is working. It's just that it's three three out of the four turrets uh, shoot incorrectly. So, um, but if you look at the bottom, this one here seems to be fine. And actually, this one's fine until until I get in range. So you can see they're kind of shooting, and they are hitting me. I mean, they 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 should be destroying on the walls, um, which they will do eventually. But um... oh, and I'm going to move this mine as well. So we're going to we're just going to do a quick kind of temporary thing for the mine. But you can see the moment I get in here, this is where it starts going weird. So this one decides it wants to shoot up. This one. Oh, actually, they all kind of break. I think it's when I'm left or right of the turrets. So we, we I think we just need to fix the logic around, um, around what side of the turrets one. So you see, if I'm on this side of the turret, this one shoots fine. This one, when it does shoot, shoots fine as well. So you can see these two hit me perfectly. These two are broken. This one is kind of stuck here. This one is shooting horizontally rather than at me. So let's ignore the ones that are facing down, like aiming down for now on the ceiling. Let's work on the ones that are on the floor. So if we stop, she's trying to sleep, leave her alone. One of my cats is basically above the other, batting the other one on the head while she's trying to sleep. She's going to attack you and she's going to hurt you. You know she'll beat the shit out of you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay, so if we go this side, though, you can see we're still on the left-hand side of this turret, and this one, when it does shoot, will shoot correctly. But this one's now shooting straight up. Yeah, so there's something weird going on because they all kind of flash off. Okay, so um, let's see what happens if we move this side of that turret. Does this one do the same? Yes. Okay, so it's definitely to do with the the reversing of some of these values. So we'll start with the bottom ones. We'll work our way up. First thing I want to do, though, is want to remove these mines from the map so that we don't have to keep doing that every time because uh, that is kind of frustrating. So I'm just going to temporarily remove them. Just got to remember to put them back again. Uh, so these mines here. So what I can do is I can just remove them uh, from here and uh, just copy them from here and put them back later. Uh, okay. Save the map. Okay, right. Just confirm that that's working and then we're good to go. I said spam listen if you've got a use for it. Not just spam it because you want to spam it. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, by the way, Jan Lu official. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you like assembly language uh, programming for the C64, you'll see plenty of it on here. Although we do use a kind of more... Um, <laughs> right, okay. We do use a, a, a modern IDE, a modern uh, assembler, which does make some of it kind of look uh, a bit more or a bit less like assembly than than you're probably used to seeing uh, which is why you can see these kind of macros here doing doing stuff but that essentially all the macros are doing is just inserting uh assembly language statements in the right places okay so let's take a look at what's going on so um we know that a turret will work correctly if it's on the bottom so if it's if it's aiming upwards instead of aiming downwards uh, and we're on the left hand side of it so if we're on the left-hand side, both of these turrets will shoot correctly. And that one does, and this one does. So the first thing we're going to fix is why does being on the right-hand side of the, those same turrets not work? So that's going to be down to the delta X and the delta Y. So the delta X and the delta Y um, of, of the bullet needs to be uh, changed. At the moment, what seems to be happening is the Y is remaining the same, and that's 
makes sense because we haven't changed the why. We're still, you know, we're still the same distance from the floor, uh, you know, from the, the from the ship to the to the level that these are at, or to the floor, basically. Uh, no matter where we are on this plane, I'm not moving in the Y direction. So, so we wouldn't expect the Y to change, and and indeed the Y is is working perfectly fine. The problem is, is the X delta is wrong. So you can see the X delta of this one's fine because we're on the left, and if we stay on the left of this one, the X delta of this one will be fine. And you'll see it shoot this way. But the moment we cross over to the other half, other other half of its kind of view, and we're on the right hand side, it fails to kind of pass that right hand view, and it gets stuck just shooting straight up. So we need to work out why the Delta X is not, not reversing. So that's going to be our first job. So shoot the turret. Here we go. Uh, so this is where we add the bullet. Um, this is where we actually place the bullet into uh, the multi... Well, place the bullet into the bullet queue, if you like. We don't really have a bullet queue, and that's something we might need to do soon. Um, but here, we definitely do need to update these deltas. So you can see here that we started by putting a zero into both these deltas. That means that the bullet with these values in is just going to do nothing. And I think that's what we're seeing up here. We're seeing a bullet that, that gets fired but has a delta of zero on both, so it doesn't do anything. So obviously something in here is branching over um, various various positions if if uh, if it happens. So let's let's have a look. So... Uh, so first of all, we're going to load the value from here. Um, so that makes this negative value. Uh, okay, so we've got the fractional value being stored here, but that could be zero at this point. Uh, the problem is, is we've got... We don't know what this value is, so we need to figure out which one we're we're working on here. Um, I'm not entirely sure which one is which here. Well, if it's negative, it's correct because it's moving correctly in a negative direction, just not in a positive direction. So we can see here that if the if the if the delta is is negative, in other words, if the the position is subtracted each frame, in other words, we're moving, uh, the, the X value is decreasing, uh, then it's fine. So that means this this section here is fine. Um, what seems to be the problem though is we're not actually getting um, a positive value from this for some reason. So let's have a look why. So shifting to the left should be multiplying. So this is basically times two, which means this one times four, then times eight then times 16. So we're multiplying that value by 16. We can see that here. Uh, and we store that value. Ah. We do shift this value to the left. Let's take this this off for a second and see if it's that. It could just be that value that's, that's causing some issues. So let's ignore the Y for now. Let's just deal with that. So this was just, we put this in to speed the bullets up and I think it might be causing some issues. So not is positive yeah 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 i get that but this, that's what i'm saying not is positive but i think what's happening is the bullets moving uh because the bullets are moving in a uh a negative direction we're obviously not using that section right at the moment we're using the, the negative section um which happens before that pos marker so it could be we just have to set um set these values explicitly for each each side. So what we're interested in now is that the bullets move. No, because I would have expected that one to move across. So I'm interested in what these two are going to do now. So that one's still moving backwards. This one needs to move forwards. This one doesn't even want to shoot right now. No, it's still moving up. Okay, so that means it's not that section. So it's not this that's doing it. So that would imply when we get to this point here that the value is zero. Uh, can I put breakpoints in here? I don't think the breakpoints work, do they? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Oh, let's not do that.
It's an interesting mathematical quandary that actually is zero positive or negative or both or neither. Um, I've never actually thought about it too much, but there must be there must be a mathematical solution to that. I know in computing you can have negative zero and positive zero, uh, but that's computing. That's just the way the way we deal with you know signed signed numbers. Um, um, but I don't know about mathematically if there is a solution to that, whether it's positive, negative, or both. Um, you could argue it's positive. Um, because a negative times a negative gives you a positive, a positive times a positive gives you a positive, and zero times zero gives you zero. So you could kind of argue it's positive like that. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, oh shit, we're on the wrong side. Okay, damn it. Yeah, we're on the wrong side. I kind of want it to be on the other side of that. So, uh, I am going to put uh, a thing here. I'm just going to do that. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is uh, just to help me put a break in here. The break works, but I want to put the break on this knob here. And that wouldn't work if I just put the label there. It would break on the one below. So you need to actually have a bite in there for it to be able to break on it. So I'm just going to make sure I, I only go on here if the value is positive, and then I can check what the accumulator is on. I have a funny feeling the accumulator might be zero at some point here, uh, meaning this becomes uh, non-zero. Or it's high enough that this just rolls over. Like if, the, if it's 16 exactly, then this would be zero. So uh, we'll we'll have a look. We'll see what happens. It's going to be something to do with this. It's definitely something to do with this. Uh, and then the next step is to do the the collision, which we have actually the routines for this in most places uh, already. So it's just a matter of kind of um, pulling them out, maybe re, uh, re kind of jigging them slightly so that they. Uh, oh, what's, why is that one firing now? Accumulator is zero C. Wait, what am I looking at here? Oh shit! The, the brake should be on the line before. That's why. Damn it! So when you do a brake, it breaks on before the next instruction. So if I put the brake there, it's going to break before this, which means the brake is actually on this label here because this doesn't have any bytes right this isn't this isn't something that's in memory this is just it's almost like another label basically um it, but it's the label that when the program reaches it will stop so if you think of it like a label then you realize that actually yes you do have to put it before something for it to work um because if i put it here break and pause two are the same so when the program jumps to pause two it's going to break anyway because the break is actually attached to this you can kind of think of it meaning kind of break before whatever the next instruction is. So, okay. So if I put that there, that should be fine. What I'm trying to do is force it to break when the bullet should be moving forwards and we can see what the value is that comes out the other side and we can step through and see exactly what's going on. Okay, so we're not getting a break, but if I move into this position here, right, there we go. Yeah, so the accumulator is zero. So it's saying that the uh, the angle is zero at this point. So, so let me go in the middle and make sure, because that could just be this one here, right? Um, which we know, we know this one's broken. So we know this one's gonna fire this way, this one's, so it's this one we're interested in. And there we go. So we've got a value, it says eight. So that is a positive number. Um, and if we look at the code here, if we times it by 16, the value that we should get stored in this Delta X rack is going to be, um, what's it going to be? 128. So, so let's, uh, let's step. Yeah. 
you see how the next instruction it continued on was the knob. Um, okay, so now we've got uh, 128, which should be stored in the delta fraction. Um, transfer accumulator to X. What? Where? Where are you seeing that? Or are you saying that's what I should be doing? No, 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 no. It's it's fine. We the value um, the value is fine. X is the X is the index into our bullet array, so we don't want to change anything and change anything there. So that means our value is uh, fractional. So the the next thing to question then is is maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the addition itself. So I'm gonna put this back because I think that is right. Um, because it definitely was making a difference to the speed and then we just check the update function it could just be the update functions not moving it correctly not adding it correctly so let's have a look so we take uh, update the bullets so we take uh, where's that bullet where's the update bullet pause here we go update bullet pause so if the bullet direction x is negative we jump to here otherwise we do this and in this case, what do we do? We take our X plus fraction, we add our fraction. Uh, okay, I mean, this should be... I don't see any reason why this should not work. But we're definitely not seeing that value stored. So let's, let's go and have a look where the delta X and delta Y is. Uh... Turret index. There we go. Right. So we've got two two sets of bullets, and our bullets are at. Let's write some values down here. Bullets index. F two nine D. All right. F two nine D. So that's the start of our data for the bullets. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check um, once we once we run this. Uh, hmm, actually, let's let's have a look. Let's have a look. F two nine D, and let's have a look what our values should be, and we can see exactly where our value would be. So this this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's F290, so F2AD would be the start of the direction and deltas. Yeah, okay. Which is here. So our direction X is zero on both, but this is this is saying that it's a it's a, a movement in the positive direction, which is fine. But, um, and same for direction Y, our delta X fractional is B0 on one of the uh, bullets, which actually should change. If I do a step, uh, we should see that value change to eight zero, which we do. There we go. So that's the calculated value, the eight times, uh, 16. Uh, oh yeah, let's get rid of that. Is that an epic store? I wish they'd piss off with the adverts. Let me turn that off. I'm not an avid Fortnite player. I think I played it once um, or maybe twice, but I haven't played a lot of it at all. <clears throat> but I do have my epic games thing open all the time, so that's probably what it is. Okay, so our Delta X and Delta, uh, our Delta X fraction is eight zero, which is correct. Our Delta Y fractional Okay, so both bullets are moving in the Y direction. And then delta X is zero, so it's a positive value. Oh, hang on, we've got zero and zero, one. Interesting. Okay, I don't know why there's zero. Let's have a look what's going on here again. So let's just go. I want one that, that fires in the other direction and then um, like that. And then I'm going to have a look at that area in memory again. We'll start here. So there we go. So that bullet is 
has a direction of x negative, so it's moving backwards. It's got a direction of y negative, so it's it's moving upwards. Um, its fractional value is uh, nine zero on the x, uh, zero on the y. That doesn't make any sense. Um, zero on the x, zero one on the y. Okay. Yeah, there's something weird going on with these values, and I'm not entirely sure what it is. Let's, let's have a let's have a think through the the logic again. So I take a tan value. If it's positive, everything works fine. So let me just get rid of these breaks and stuff. Don't need that anymore. So if it's positive, everything is fine. Uh, if it's not positive, though, we get into issues. Uh, so what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to switch this around a little bit. Uh, and instead of doing this here... Oh, actually, no, I can't, because we need to we need to do it before we, before we move. But if we get a negative... Uh, is it because I'm taking a negative value and then I'm shifting it? That is what's happening, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do uh, pos done, uh, pos done like that. I'll call it pos neg done because that means means more. So we're just putting a, a well, I'll just call it done actually. It doesn't really have to have the whole thing in. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the negative section in here, and the negative section is going to do exactly the same um, as the positive section, but it's going to do this at the end. Um, I just want to check to see if this is working first. Um, if it is, we'll tidy this up because I think this could be tidied to to not repeat these. I mean, it's only four bytes, but if I can, if I can reduce this by a few bytes, then it would make more sense. Uh, actually, it's not four; it's it's uh, seven because you have to do that jump. And it's inefficient because it has to do, do another jump there. So, it might be worth doing the, the whole thing and then negating it at the end. So, storing the values. So, just doing this bit and then checking this to see if we need to negate it. So, let's see if this works first. If this works, then um, we, we have a solution. Yes, OC times 16 does set the neg bit. That's why I'm doing the check on the value at the top here. I can't just I can't just do all of this and then negate it. I have to I have to be a bit smart about how I do it. So um, uh, the the value is never going to be more than um, Actually, maybe it needs to be times eight and not times sixteen. Maybe that's the problem. Let's see what happens here, and then and then, uh, yeah, one maybe the number gets too big and shifted out. Nicomo, I think you're right there. That's I think that's what it is. Yeah, ba basically both of you are saying the, the same thing. Yeah, I think that's it. I'll give you. I'll give, thank you for the. Um, thank you for the bit anonymous cheer. Appreciate it. Unfortunately, my my alert overlay is not working at the moment because of some crap with Twitch and OBS. So I will try and fix that for the next stream. I've got it in massive writing on down here. But yeah, essentially that's what's happening. So the value that we've got is um, it's a sixteen bit value that we want to negate, right? So let's let's work in. I'll give you both points for that because I think you you kind of you both said the same thing. You just came at it from kind of different directions. So I'll give you both points. All right, let's do that now. Let's give you uh, five points each. There, I think, is fair. <clears throat> so I think what we're going to do is instead of doing it this way, where we um, 
we 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 take a value we do a check and then we do something different if the if the tangent is neg negative or positive what we're going to do is we're just immediately going to store this value uh let's let's you know keep that and we're just going to change this area so i'm going to take this value we're going to immediately store this at that value here right so now we've got a value in memory at that location um but what we need to be doing is we need to be um doubling it and up updating this value here um so the way we're going to do this is we're now going to so this becomes our uh our delta x value oops And now what we can do is we can basically do this, this loop um, where we do this one times two. And I'm actually going to put this in a loop. So, so this is a, an example where I'm just doing this for kind of, um, for code kind of simplicity. Uh, this is basically going to repeat this, this, um, uh, this loop several times uh just these two commands so we're basically we're shifting to the left the the lower byte and then we're rolling the accumulator which is the upper byte uh that's basically going to have the effect of shifting everything to the left if the leftmost bit drops off into the into the carry bit it's then rolled into the uh the delta x here uh, so we're just going to do this uh well what do we need we need uh we need to do times two, four, eight, 16, 32. So we need to do this five times. So what this will do when we assemble this is it will just repeat these commands five times. Six, I put six there. There'll <laughs> be lots of dog treats here. Well, technically, the prize was the um, uh, the prize was the uh, the Raspberry Pi, um, uh, but because I was sending you such a massive box, so so what happened is when and Andy won the PS Five. Well, uh, I think Eldridge won it, didn't he, and gifted it. Um, but the uh, PS Five and the Raspberry Pi all got put into one box. And it was a really big box. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send a few kind of nice presents as well. So I sent some chocolates for the missus and um, and some doggy treats as well for the doggies. Uh, just to fill the box out and stuff. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what happened there. Not to say that, you know, the next person who wins something won't get, won't get a nice prize, but um, a, a bon prize bonus. But um, yeah, that's, that's why that happened. Okay, so now what we need to do is we now need to negate if this value is negative. So we're gonna we're gonna load that value again. So now we've got our values, we've got a fractional value, and we've got a delta x value. But now we need to negate these values. Now these values can actually stay. Ah, hang on. I just realized what we're what we were doing wrong. I've just realized what we were doing wrong. When it's updated. Here, we subtract or we add, depending on if it's positive or negative. So actually, we don't need to negate any of the value. The only thing we need to negate is the direction. We just need to store whether the direction is negative or positive. So the way we can do this is very, very simple because the direction has no bearing on anything. It's never added. Um, You'll see here, it's it's only the only reason it's decreased here is so that it becomes negative. Uh, and it's not used anywhere else other than comparing it to see if it's negative or positive. So the simplest way to do this is when we load that value, we also store that value. Oh, no, because if it is negative, we need to invert it. Because this could be negative, this a tangent could indeed be a negative value is that right or will it only ever be positive maybe it's only ever positive no it can't be because this is uh, 
Okay, well, the, the very first thing we need to do is we need to store it here. So now, whether it's positive or negative, it gets stored in this. Um, and then I guess we do... If it is positive, we jump straight to here. Otherwise, we hear the carry bit. Otherwise, we negate it. So now, regardless of what we do, the value the value as we enter this loop here, this section here, is positive, uh, which is all we ever need it to be. We only ever want this value to be positive. This is actually doing the calculation that's working out. Um, if the if the tangent that we've got is a negative value, then whatever it is, store it so that we've got the uh, we've got the store. Uh, so still 294 oh yeah yeah i just did it. yeah okay sorry got miles behind okay so i think that's right let's uh let's just comment all that out so this value should only the resulting value here should only ever be positive and this is ensuring that if we go into it with a negative number it's inverted before we do this the uh the time 16 was a problem here because potentially it could have been, yeah, so it could have just been done three times and then two. So hang on, if we do. Because times two is fine times four is fine and times eight is fine because it never goes above 16 so that's that's absolutely fine times 16 can be a problem though actually no it can't be a problem why would it be a problem let's just keep it on five for now i'll come back to this but i think i think that should be all right let's let's try it see what happens <laughs> Doubt myself now. Okay, so they're working that way. Yeah, everything's working. Oh, interestingly. Oh, no, they didn't work for it. Okay, they're firing. Okay, 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 okay. It's not. No, still not working. Right, what I'm going to do as well temporarily is I'm just going to remove these turrets. Oops. <laughs> Oat milk, or <Ooh>, wine. <laughs> oh, what's not working there? Oh, have I pressed some? Oh, no. What have I done? The hell? What have I done? Oh, I know what I've done. It's because there's four turrets on the screen, but I've only put one on. Uh, okay. Oh, actually, that's the easier way of doing this then. So if I if I save that, I don't need to put those back. Right, that's saved anyway. So if instead of removing them from the map, what I can do is I can come into the screen code for this screen. This is really nice actually being able to do this. I forgot which screen it is. Now is it that one? Yeah. 
and we just want the bottom turret there so we just get rid of the other ones it's because we were trying to launch a macro that didn't have uh, anything to put them from So now I've only got one fire, and so this should be a bit easier to, to monitor what's going on. So let's. So notice as well, it disappears for a split second before it continues. So when it's on that side, it seems to have some issues. So it shoots fine, shoots fine, shoots fine, doesn't shoot fine. Disappears, shoots, doesn't shoot fine. Disappears, doesn't shoot fine. Okay, there's something very odd going on with it. But now what we can do is we can just check on this one side now, right? So we can see exactly what value is coming in at this point here and step through and see what happens. Okay. Uh, so let's... Okay, we're just adding bullet here so let's start with this value here god damn it <sighs> disappeared again for the first shot back when it was fine yeah it just it's it's bizarre i'm not sure exactly what's going on so i think there's, there's two things at play here so you've got to remember that the, the direction that it shoots the bullet in is directly related to the turret's angle. Um, and I don't, I mean, obviously, I mean, you can see visually it is, but what I mean is that the angle that is calculated to display the turret at that angle, that value is stored so that the bullet can be shot at that angle. So the value that it's cal the value that it generates to, to position that turret is also what it uses to fire the turret. So the fact that the turret can actually move around to both sides means the value is correct, but the fact that it's disappearing would imply that there is something a little bit odd going on. Um, we're going to get another break here, I think. Yeah, let's see what happens on this one here. Right. So here we would expect a, a kind of strange value. So we've got a value of zero A, and previously it was negative. So we have a positive, uh, we have a positive value here. Let's go through this. So that, that positive value is going to get stored. So we know it's it's positive. So direction X is going to be positive. Okay, so let's step into this. Uh, so that's not going to work. Uh, well, that is going to work. So we're going to skip straight over this and we're going to store that at our uh, delta X fraction fractional value. Um, so that's at F2, B1. Uh, and that's a value of 0A and that's stored in the first, first slot. Shift B one, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so now let's have a look. So we load the accumulate with zero, and we store that. Uh, no, then we shift the value in F two B one. Okay, so it's F two B one is zero A. So if I step, okay, we're doubling it. Yeah, that's correct. So ten times two is twenty. Then we roll in the value in the accumulator, uh, which is zero. So it's still going to so it's going to stay zero until we we roll over. So so we uh, let's do step step step. Okay, now at this point we should be on. How's it going to be? It's going to be twenty forty eighty. It's going to be five zero. I would I would assume at this point. Yeah. And we still haven't rolled. Then we shift again, and then we roll again. Okay, and then we store that value in delta x. Uh, the value in the accumulator is one, uh, and that's because the value that we we shifted went from five zero to a zero, and then it rolled over to zero one four zero. So what we should see in uh, in here is four zero, which we do. Okay, so that's correct. Our value is one. 
0140. So that's that's perfectly correct, and that's exactly what we'd expect to see. So then why is that not updating properly? That's bizarre. That is really bizarre. So we can see here's our here's our data here. Um, this is our all our bullet data. So let's just go through this bullet. There's only one bullet. So it should be uh, should just be this one here that we need to deal with. Um, it has an index, a turret index of uh, zero. Oh no, sorry, not over we're here. It has uh, a direction x of zero a. That's just the whether or not it's positive or negative. So we know it's a positive direction. Uh, it's uh, a positive y direction. It hasn't actually been set here, but um, because we're using a different method. It's delta x fractional is four zero. It's delta y fractional is six zero. It's delta x is zero. Interesting. That should be zero one. Interesting. A D E F zero one two three four five. Oh, we haven't stepped into it yet. So if I step into it. Uh, four zero zero one. Okay, so all our values are set correctly. Everything is set as we would expect it to be in this in this array here. So the question is, why is that not working? So if I just click go and then stop again, let's have a look to see if those values are still the same. So we have. Uh, four zero zero one. So the values are still exactly the same. So our value, our, our our thing should still be moving in a positive x direction, but it is not. Uh, and our direction x is positive. So let's go and have a look why that's not happening. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, then, uh, we'll we'll come back and we'll do the same on the y here. I'm I'm happy with with that system. I think that's. Uh, but let's do that now while I, while I, while I'm thinking about it. So it's nice and neat. Um, so we'll just copy this over because we know this is, we know this is working now. So we just need to do the same for Y. So this becomes Y, this becomes Y, this becomes Y, this becomes Y, and this becomes Y. And that's basically doing the same thing that we're doing here. So that's a much neater way of doing it as well, I think. Oops. I was getting really annoyed looking for games for my game collection, trying to find uh, nice bundles of games to buy. Uh, and every bundle has a copy of FIFA in there somewhere. It's so annoying. Uh, no whole X Delta. No, so we've got the deltas are right. So if we look at the, the values, um, the delta is fine. So this is our fractional value um, for X for both bullets. This is our fractional value for Y for both bullets. And this is our uh, integer value for uh, our whole number value. Um, oh, it's very other. <laughs> it's because FIFA just drops in value so much. It's not worth anything. I mean, it's kind of crazy that... Um, that people even bother trying to sell it because I mean it's it's of all the games it's probably the fastest game to drop in price. It goes from what's what's like a fifty quid game on release to within within a year it's in you know CX and eBay for like a pound. It's ridiculous how cheap it goes and how quickly it goes because uh, it's a because it's shit. B because everybody everybody ends up getting it. It's a popular popular game. Yeah, most modern games I just wait a year or so, but yeah, that's what I've been doing. So my my PS5 games, I've got quite a few now, uh, and I've just been buying them because they're the games that um, have been out a year, and I just pick them up like that. So, but I think on every platform, FIFA is going to be the game game collection I complete the quickest, um, followed probably closely behind by Call of Duty. In fact, I think I've got I think I've got the PS3 Call of Duty set now, um, and I've got s some of the PS4, but not not quite. The N64 games—they're the ones I really want to get. 
they're they're the ones I'm kind of determined to get get them all. So Tomb Raider, yeah, Tomb Raider set will be interesting as well because I can get that from PS because. I basically want from PS1 all the way up to PS5. Uh, I'm not too fussed about PSP, but I have got a PSP and I have got a PS Vita, but I'm not too bothered about them. So, um, Yeah, Switch games are expensive, aren't they? Uh, same with Jaguar games as well. I do want to get the Jaguar games, but I, do, I don't want to get Jaguar games loose. I want them boxed. Um, and they're just so expensive, like ridiculously expensive. Um I don't mind the box state for, for N64, SNES, uh, and Mega Drive. I don't mind because they're all going in Universal Game boxes anyway uh, for storage. But, um, oh, yeah, Conker's bad for day. Yeah, well, at least that'll be fine. It's just getting it uh, um, getting it boxed would be difficult. Also, uh, Paper Mario on the N64 is expensive as well. I mean, you're looking at about two or 300 quid for a cart, so... Yeah, I'm not going to start collecting Neo Geo. No way. I've seen the prices those go for. I'm also not going to be upset if I get reproduction carts as well. I mean, I'm not going to go looking for them. It's not going to be something I particularly aim to get, but I'm not going to be upset if I get... get. Well, I'll be upset if I pay like top price for one and, and I, I end up getting a reproduction cart. But like, if I think I've kind of sniped something a good deal and it turns out to be a repro cart, then ah, fine. I'm like, it's not the end of the day, uh, not the end of the world for me. But I mean, certainly my GBA games are probably half, half repro anyway. So, uh, like GBA, I don't care. GBA, I will get repros because I, like I say I've got probably about hundred GBA games, uh, and I'd say about half of them are reproduction. So. Uh, But I thought I might as well spend money on something that I can kind of pass down. My son will enjoy this sort of stuff when, when I pass it down to him. Um, my daughter as well, to be honest. Um, and it's something kind of cool in the meantime. I can just pull a game off the show. And maybe we'll do some streams where I just play random games. Set a little set a little laser pointer up on the wall. We just randomize it. It just points at a game, and that's the game we play for the night. Some game prices are mental, oh, yeah. I really do want Paper Mario on the N64. I do want... Because I genuinely want to play it, but I'm not going to pay 300 quid for for the cartridge. No way. Um, okay, right. Let's take a look at the edition. So we know this is kind of working. In fact, let's just double check that's all working now. Everything's running fine. What's it doing? Did I just break something? No, that's weird. Maybe it's because I press quit or something. Not sure. Weird. Don't know why I was doing that. Okay, so that seems to be working in the Y direction, it seems to work in the X direction, just making sure it works on this side. Okay, so everything works except the X direction. And it just seems to be the delta's not getting added on the on the X. So let's just check those. Ah. Oh. Can anyone see the problem? I'm a fucking moron. I'm a moron. In fact, I'm not even sure how that was even working. I was doing I was doing the add, but then I was also doing the, the uh, subtract, which is why it was working in the negative direction, uh, but not in the not in the not in the other direction. So this this should fix all directions actually. This should fix up and down and everything there. But yeah, so maybe but that would have been that would have probably been 
I would say that would be close to a 25 pointer there, I reckon, because that has taken me uh, an hour and probably another hour on the previous stream as well. So, okay, so we've still got a disappearing turret down here. Why that's happening, I don't know, but. <laughs> yeah 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 whatever is, is your lag if your lag is like a week long then i would believe it but um <laughs> okay so the question is why is the why is the turret flashing that's that's the only thing so the reason the turret would flash is because we don't get the right value um for for the aiming so we need to just double check that we're doing the aiming correctly as well and that there's not something weird going on with that where we um where we get an odd value uh let's just aim it let's just have a look again and see if we can find a find a pattern in it i think the turret disappears since a flag is set to zero or you check the wrong flag <laughs> Oh, Andy's commitment to the lag is is good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> your commitment to the uh, to the AMK points is is incredible. Well done. <laughs> well, you didn't buy saying that now. If you'd have said what you just said. You said your last phrase in another five minutes. <laughs> okay, so we don't get any disappearing here. I don't get any disappearing there either. So the reason it's stopping on the edge is because that's where I've told it to to do the, the the destruction with the bullet it does flash slightly yeah you're right i wonder if it's to do with i wonder if it's to do with the updates rate of them so if i put if i put the other ones back in now will we get more flashes navy seals Navy Seals is a beautiful looking game, I've got to say. Although I don't know if that was the Amiga or the uh, or the C64, but it did look very nice on the C64. It's really nice use of colours, and and I think they had high res overlays as well on the on the sprites. So, as you can see now, the top ones are shooting properly because they're shooting down. Not getting any flashes now, though, which is interesting. Or at least we're not getting, we're not getting, oh, no, there we go. So they all turn off. Why would they all turn off? Possibly multiplexer, yeah, I guess, but I mean, it shouldn't be an issue. It would have to be, yeah, I don't, I don't think it is a multiplexer. Plus, they all turn off at the same time as well, and it does seem to be slightly related to the direction. I'm at. like, like some value has flipped and and causes some changes. There we go. Just and it is just literally for like one cycle of updates. It seems to be when the direction 
flips. Yeah, the bullet is sticking there because it, it's it's being classed as cleared at that point. Um, just because I set some boundaries to where um, where the bullets should should basically count as cleared. For for bullets on the X direction, it's if they hit zero or or the MSB basically. So if they hit two five five, um, then they're classed as being off. Say so if they overflow, basically. But yeah, see that they just all turn off suddenly. They all go off. So the only the reason it looks stuck is because it it's not been it's not been removed properly yet. Um, it will be different once we've we've got the full removal code with the collision with the background. But the same thing's happening off screen here. You just don't see it because the the borders aren't removed, so you don't you don't see it. Um, but the same will be happening then with the vertical borders and the side borders as well. Um, okay, why? Why might that be happening? Well, I'll tell you what, let's have a look in the debugger because the debugger will give us an idea when it happens where those sprites actually go. Um, because we'll see them on the um, on the overlay down here. The aim crosses are. Oh yeah, it's a good point actually. They're only redrawn when the turret's active, but the thing is they they alternate, so it only takes four frames for them all to become for them all to be disappeared, but. Maybe let's have a look at the flags. Maybe it's the active flags. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Yeah, you think you might be right. Yeah, they're not getting drawn at all. I think you're right. I think it is to do with the flags. Yeah. All right. Let's let's check the flags in memory again. And if this is the case, I'll give uh, who was that? SP and Nikoma both five points because again, you both kind of said the thing. You came in from different directions again. Um, so let's take a look. So we're looking at the active, not the active at this one here. So this is a, a F one. Uh, sorry, F two, nine D, nine E. And F A zero, so F two A one is what we're looking at. So let's jump to that F two A one. So it's these two things here. You can see the flags get set to zero one zero one. Let's make this a bit bigger. Hopefully you can see that just about on the side here. So you can see where the where the highlight is here. Zero one zero 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 zero. These these two here basically are the two bullets, and you can see uh, these are just whether or not the bullets are active. Um, but we've also got another flag as well that we should probably be checking, which is the, uh, oh, I thought it was that one. I was it in stat flag? Hang on. Yeah, this locked. So we've got this locked variable as well. Uh, actually locked is not. It's this one is it this is active here okay so it's in stat flag so that's this one here so uh okay i need to put a debug in to find that as well so i think this is the one that we need actually not the other one so let's just close the debugger again let's rebuild this That flag is at F23D. So we've got four turrets. So F23D should have the stat flags for these. And if bit zero is set on those, then that means that um, the, the turret is active in, it, in that it's uh, it's not been destroyed. But then again, if the turret wasn't active... Oh, no, it wouldn't necessarily be because it has to actually have been... 
destroyed. So that maybe it's been set to inactive temporarily somewhere else by mistake. Uh, part of the locking mechanism, maybe. Um, so let's go and have a look. So we're looking at F2, 3D. Uh, which you probably can't see. So let me just make this fit the window. So it's these values here, F2, 3D. So you'll see when I move on to the next screen, um, we should get four values set up in here. And you can see they've got 3131. One. So, so that basically saying that um, we have, uh, where is it? I guess the bit, bit one is aimed down. Yeah, so we've got uh, four turrets. They're all active and two of them are aiming down, which we know that's that is correct. So the question is, is do do any of these flick to zero or two while I'm down here? That's what's what we're interested in trying to find out now. So keep your eye on those values up there and see if they do flicker. To even numbers. Oh, I didn't. I, they, it happened, and I didn't bloody look. Oh, I forgot we can rewind, can't we? Let's pause it. Was it? it was around here somewhere? There we go. Okay, so we have three, four flags, seven, five, F5. So this is saying that all the flags can shoot, all, all of them are available for shooting. Um, all of them are still active. Only one of them is locked, and that's right, because we've got one bullet flying around. So, so that's not correct, then. Then the question is, why are they not rendering though? At that point, what what is causing them to not render? Let's let's go back to the last frame where they were. So they were fine here, seven D seven five. So this one was on on D. So that is um, it can shoot, but it is locked and it's active. Uh, that's probably one of these ones here. It's probably this one here, um, and then I literally. It's when this one gets set. So it is something to do with the locking mechanism stops them from displaying for some reason. So let's let's have a look at the aim turret functionality. Maybe there's something in there. The flags seem to be fine though. Um so no points there. But there there is probably uh probably some jump out of this loop when the value is is incorrect. So uh let's just have a look. Aim the turret. Reset can shoot flag. Okay, so that resets the flag. Aim the turret. Where's aim the turret? Where's aim the turret being called from? It's going to be called from the update, isn't it? Let's have a look. Where's the update? Aim the turret. There we go. So we set the why. We aim the turret, then we shoot the turret. And we never change the why. Is that still the case? Or do we actually mess with the why? Because it could be that. Just check to see if Y is used anywhere. I don't think it is. I think we've been pretty good with this on purpose. But if we do, we need to put it back. Yeah, that looks to be absolutely fine. Yeah, no Y being used in there. Let's check in here. Is any Y being used in here? Uh... Yes, but we also store it here, so we do restore. And that's exactly what we do there. Okay, so that's good as well. This is just checking if we remove it, so it wouldn't be that anyway. Um, inventory, shoot the turret. Okay, so could it be shoot the turret? Let's 
So let's check this function. We're just checking to see if the Y register has been used anywhere outside of the, the indexing. Uh, we do have a store Y and we have a transfer Y, but then we restore it back here. So we do grab that value again here. Uh, we do return from the function here, but we haven't done anything up to that point. So, so far, so good. And we don't mess with the Y anywhere here. Okay. Okay, so the Y registers are fine, and the Y register is pointing to which turret is doing what. Um, so that's fine. So the question now is, is do is there anything in the aim turret which would cause that thing to disappear? So let's take a look. Uh, So we do set, so where are the values being recorded? So this is where we record the values. Um, and at some point, this value becomes, well, it's almost like it's not there at all. What we should actually look for is this. We should go and have a look at the multiplexer, see what the values are in the multiplexer at that point. So 4FCC, let's just go and grab that thing. 4FCC is here. So before FCC, no, it's, yeah, okay, for FCC, for FCD, FCE, for FD0 is, is, oh, that's here. Where's the actual data? It's there, All right. Uh, what was the sprite point X, Y set to, and the ninth bit of X when it disappears? Uh, that's a very good point. Um, Well, we would expect sprites to be there. The problem is because we're using a multiplexer, so these values are not going to be that useful to us because it's not really telling us much. We do have a sprite here, um, but we're not seeing it anywhere. So that's an interesting point. We do have two turret uh, positions here, but they're saying that they're not enabled, so they're not displaying at all. So if I set... Uh, D015 to F0. At that point, and then just advance by. Wow, it's some keys. Yeah, the multiplexer is turning it off for some reason. So we need to have a look at the multiplexer data. Okay, so the multiplexer is at 4FD0 is here. Let's have a look, 4FD0. Uh, how many sprites do we have? C max multiplex sprites. So this has to be the maximum number of sprites, and that's going to be in constant. I think it's 20 or something. I don't know. Yeah, 20. Because it would be a weird number, wouldn't it? All right. Uh, so that means up to there is the X positions. Now, the first three are going to be the player uh, and such. So let's, let's just... Um, Let's press play on this and see if we can... Oh, hang on. Then what the hell are all these doing? Because this is... That's the MSB. Why is that so high? Oh, no. I'm reading wrong. So there's this function here. Five zero zero B gives us our Y positive. All right, that should be enough for us to work from. All right. So this is our Y position here uh, for three sprites. So the only sprite we're seeing here is the player sprite, and then there's these. These ones are for some reason set to FF. I don't know why, but then there are some sprites here which should be showing. This looks like the turrets and the the bullets. So this is what we should be looking at here. Uh, but in order to to work this out properly, we need to find out where the X position is as well. So 
I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to put um, X position up here. And we're going to have a look at the X and Y position to these. Um, I don't think it is the multiplexer, although it would explain why they all turn off at once. If there is like a fail in the in the multiplexer, which creates a weird raster value, uh, which could just be one of the values being set to to, to the wrong value. So like it could be an XMSB that's wrong. Well, it would probably be the Y value that's wrong. Um, but it would be strange for it to, um, yeah I, I i mean do we use the zero page variables which zero page variables you mean the a tan x and the a tan y but these are these are done all within this function so nothing inside this function they're using g temps and g temps don't get used in irqs all sprites on one raster line at the same time I, I mean, you'd still see some though. That's the weird thing. I want to see what values it pumps out. I, I, I want to see what we we actually get out the other end here. So let's uh, let's set some looking values here. So we've got um, four F E three and five zero zero B. And this is one of the great things with this debugger is we can rewind. So we can find find a problem and then just keep rewinding until we solve the problem, basically. Is it a bad line? Is it when they're on a certain X value? I don't know, but it, it, it feels like somewhere along the way, there's a calculation that happens incorrectly. So let me put that there. It's when they go to shoot again. So you see it happen then. So let's pause it. There we go. So they're missing at this point. Oh no, they're not actually. Let's put that in there. All right. They're missing at this point. If we look at 4E, 4FE3, these are our X positions. So the first three are not, not important. We're not going to, we're not going to bother with those. These two, I'm not sure what these are, but I don't think we need to look at these two either. Um, whereas I think these are the actual values that we're interested in. So we add 20 to that to get the MSB. That would be uh, 1, 4, so it would be 4 F, uh, F7. So that's this one here. So they've all got X positions. So hang on, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's these ones here, 1, 2, 3, 4. They've all got X positions of zero, MSBs of zero. So that should be fine. Our X positions are correct, at least as far as I can tell. The fact that these two are on E2, these are the bullets. These are, I think this is just like a reset position. Um, X positions kind of look okay, I guess. Um, but it's a bit weird, actually, how three of the expositions are kind of on one side. Okay, there is something a little bit weird going on here. Zero B, so one, two, three, one, two. So these are our Y positions. Oh, we do have a Y position of zero. Which would screw the, this would screw the multiplexer up. So why is the Y position being set to zero? Okay, so let's just check that value. So we're, we're looking at these six values here. If any of these become zero, that's what we're interested in. So let's rewind to somewhere where it's not. None of them is zero, right? None of them is zero. There we go, zero, not zero. Yeah, so it is multiplexer. Nikoma, you were right, it is the multiplexer. But it's the multiplexer because the multiplexer is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is crapping out when it hits the um, zero. So so basically the multiplexer has got a few kind of commands, if you like. Um, so the, the fact is the multiplexer is not actually broken. The multiplexer is doing what it's supposed to do, which if it sees a zero, stop doing sprites, um, which is what it's doing. 
Um, but the problem is, why is it doing a zero there? It should not be putting a zero in that position. So that comes from the aim. So while while you're on the right right steps there, I, I'm going to give you five points because you you've kind of you've point correctly pointed out that it is kind of the multiplexer which is making them disappear. But we need to figure out why it's making them disappear, and it's basically this value here. For some reason, this value is is being stored as zero. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, branch if not equal that, and then I'm going to put a, a break here and a knob here. Hey, old school coder, welcome to the stream. So we're going to try and figure out why. Uh, let's just uh, let's bring that all the way back over here. So, so this is just a bit of debug code. This is just going to make sure that we break when we hit this particular condition. Um, oh, <laughs> wrong channel. No worries. Now, now I'm in, intrigued who Connor might be. Is there a zero in the ATAN table? But that shouldn't matter, right? Because the, the zero in the ATAN table, we're starting with this value. It's, it's like this value is wrong. And why is this value wrong? Why is this value zero to begin with? Let's see if we let's see if we hit the break here. This is this is what we're we're interested in, so. So what I'm what I'm kind of banking on is that when the bug happens, one of these values is set to zero, and we see that reflected in the. That's not freaking happening now, is it? We see the break happen. I see no reason why it would be zero though. But it's definitely what's happening. That va that value becomes zero for some reason. Okay, so maybe it's a bullet then. Maybe it's not the turrets. Maybe it's the bullets. Which definitely could be zero. Yeah, actually, that's that makes a lot more sense. Watching some other stream and they're killing some dude named Connor. Sarah Connor. <laughs> oh my god, negative plasma is a terminator. <laughs> okay, I reckon it's to do with the bullets. It has to be, right? There's no or the way it would be doing that, so here, basically. So if this works, then what we should see is a breakpoint happen. Then when I continue from the breakpoint, the turrets will disappear. But it makes absolutely sense. Uh, Seven bits, seven bits signed ASCII. Signed ASCII. I like that it's signed ASCII. Actually, I mean, you could kind of argue that the um, that the 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 Commodore sixty four character set is is signed Petsky, right? Because you've got the inverse set as well at the top. Except it's not two two complements signed because what it should be, it should be a mirror image in that you know. Um, 255 character 255 should be an inverse at symbol um then you could say that's in, in uh, that's signed petsky signed reverse petsky if that makes sense or am i just talking gibberish i think i'm talking gibberish to be honest but All right come on so is it more likely when the Y hits zero for some reason? It's the it's the change in direction that throws me off. Like why does change in direction cause it more? 
mean, it definitely did, that's for sure. It's not happening now, is it? Hey, there we go. All right. So I think now if I press go, yes. Okay, so it's the bullets. So the problem is, is the bullets are updating. Uh, when the Y pos is zero, it shouldn't be being added to the multiplexer. It, it really shouldn't be being shown at all. Um, we can put a temporary thing in here um, by doing this, which is just make sure if the bullet is going to try and set that to zero, just don't. Um, so that's a temporary workaround. But I think what we should be doing instead um, is trying to figure out we should just be removing the bullet, right? At that point, we should stop updating it. The problem is, is that it's continuing to update. And the reason it's doing that is because the update is checking if we've hit certain boundaries. And we do that in here, right? Uh, so the moment we we check, uh, actually, we just checking the X pods here. Oh no, we check the Y pods here as well. But you can see, look, we, we continue as long as the bullet is less than F0. But at some point, it's obviously going more than that, and it's going down further than further than F0, and it's it's remove, it's not removing the bullet at that point. Or well, the bullet isn't being removed properly, I think. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, that's what I'm doing now, yeah. So, turret shoot timer. Okay, so this is what's happening at the moment. We remove the bullets. Um... So we just need to make sure that we don't update a bullet if it's if it's not active, basically. Which is what we're doing here. If the bullet is active, uh, it's not active, we jump to skip, which is here, right? Um, so let's just comment that out and comment this out, because this, this is a workaround. I don't want to use that workaround if I can help it. But that means the bullets could come into this position. And then at this point, we start adding delta, bullet deltas. Um, and all that jazz. But if the bullet is removed. We do say it's active to zero. OK. And we decrease the active count. Okay, so we it seems to be something to do with this. It's like the remove bullet is not technically removing it properly. Um, but we checked these and they were fine. Unless it's to do, maybe it's the other flag, the flag we weren't looking at. The, the active flag on the bullet, not the active flag on the turret. Shouldn't the collision fix that problem? Yes, it should. But at the same time, I think we should, we'd be hiding the problem, right? So, hey, Warlock, welcome. Uh, we'd be hiding the problem rather than fixing it. So um, I'd rather fix it, I think. So I'm going to take a quick break because I just need to nip to, nip to the toilet. Uh, I shall leave you. I don't think the quiz is due for a while, is it? No. Okay, right. So I'll leave you with the with the quiz. I'm going to be back in a few minutes, guys. Be right back. Right, I am back. Let's get some wine in me. Let's get my screen brightness refreshed because the OLED is kicking in and saying, nope, darkness, please. There we go. Such a difference between bad and good Malbec, I'm surprised. Actually, I'm not surprised. Red wine is very obvious. Okay. Okie dokie dokie. Let's uh, take a look. So, for some reason, a remove bullet is not being called. So let's... Let's check it. Let's, let's do a border increment. And what we should see, we should see the border increase every time a bullet moves off into whatever area it moves off into if at any point we don't see that happen then we're probably going to see the the turrets screw up right so around line six and one let me just check that uh let me see where you want to go then rts line after Uh, 
Uh, actually, yes. Actually, you've got it. Oh, I like that. Actually, I think you've stumbled upon something. I don't even think you quite know what you've 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 done there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip these around like that, and remove the RTS. And I'm going to do the same here, but I'm going to keep that RTS. So what we're doing here is uh, tail call returns or tail, ret tail calls, I guess you would call them. So basically what we're doing is we're saying, go jump to this function, but we don't expect you to come back at all. We don't expect anything to come back. This has an RTS at the end. So we're jumping straight into here and then as soon as this is run we're exiting because that's what we we want to do right so i'm i'm going to give you i'm going to give you five points well actually i'm going to give you yeah no i'll give you five because it was a small thing but um it's a nice nice little thing though that saves a couple of bytes it is it is very nice um actually saves saves a few bytes and a few cycles as well because we don't we're not returning from here to just then return from that. We're, we're returning straight from this one instead. So we're actually using remove bullet almost like a um, function within here, if you like. In fact, it's probably better to put this inside here um, for now, just because then it, it's obvious that this is um, part of this function and it doesn't become too confusing that it's... Um, separate thing uh but we may be moving this anyway so uh but there's nothing there's mm, there's nothing stopping us leaving it in here and calling it from other places update bullet pause remove bullet would be a function that you can call and it would still do the same thing so yeah i like that that's a nice nice little system yeah tell calls is something um you should look into if you're optimizing so if you're ever writing some code and you just need a handful of cycles here and there You'll find a lot of the times that you uh, you've got like a method or a block of code that does like a jump to subroutine this, jump to subroutine that, jump to subroutine this, RTS. So you're doing three JSRs and then an RTS at the end. When what you could do is you could do JSR, JSR, jump, and you don't need the RTS. So you save a byte on the end, but you also save the the time it takes to come back from that function as well. Uh, because instead of coming back from that function to the function that you just left, you come back from that function to the function before that as well. So you save a byte and you save about six cycles, I think as well. So definitely worth uh, keeping an eye out for those. Very useful in demo stuff as well. I mean, every, every cycle counts in demo stuff, but yeah, you'll see it used a lot in that. Um, okay, let me just flick command map on the screen just to get some brightness, thank you. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's kind of nice, I like that. It kind of neatens this up a little bit. Um, makes remove bullet a kind of a method of this uh this uh this kind of object if you like this this call so it's a it's a sub method or so i don't know what you'd call it it's, method is probably the wrong subroutines the right right word okay let's uh let's restart everything all right so what we should see should see the border flash uh, I can't take your AMK point. I don't have a remove AMK points button. Um, local method. Yeah, local method would be... Uh, yeah, what would you call it in Java? Yeah, you would call it local method as well in, in, in JavaScript as well, I think. Local. Yeah, you you call it a local, locally scoped method. You'd call it, yeah. Yeah, so local method is correct, yeah. But method is kind of the wrong word anyway for um, for assembly because it's not really a method. You don't really pass parameters to it in the same way you would do with a method. It is just a subroutine. It's just a block. It's a chunk of code that runs and then returns back to where it was before. Um, it is kind of like it is. I mean, it's it's, it's synonymous to a uh, to a method, but it, it's not a method. Okay, so we're seeing border increments. So you can see. We, one, two, three. You see when the bullets go off, we get the border increment changes. Okay, so for any point they don't happen. Oh, 
I feel like it did change though then. It's when they shoot straight up. That's what it is. It's when they shoot straight up. It's happening every time here. One. Yeah, and the border does change. So, so it is getting into that routine. It is getting into this. But it's like this is maybe the why is wrong at this point. No, it can't be because that's. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to transfer Y to the accumulator. Uh, I'm going to add one to it. And then we'll store that in the border. So now we're going to have the Y index of the thing. It's either going to be white or red. The reason I'm adding one is otherwise it would be black. We wouldn't see anything. So we're going to pass white or red to the border. And that will tell us which bullet is being removed. If at any point that's anything other than white and red, we know we've got a problem. Local subroutine. Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? Local subroutine. And I mean, the thing is, is all code ends up being machine code anyway. And so you can represent all, every code that we rewrite in whatever language can be represented as assembly um, anyway, right? So. And it's the sort of thing you will see in that case. You will see these. And that's a white, red, white, red. Okay. So the values are fine. There, it's off. Okay. So why, why though, is it doing that? Why, what is making it continue to update? Because the, the only reason it would happen is if we failed this check for some reason and the value became zero. So if the value is more than this, we remove the bullet, right? So that means if the value is same as this or more, so if it's S0 or FF, which means the value could hit zero by going the other way. Ah, so if we did, That's it. That's all it is. It's just because we're going the other way. So uh, I'll change the border kind of size a little bit. So let's make this like, because the border starts at F2 at the bottom. It starts at like two, well, it starts at three zero at the top. Let's make it like two eight and let's make this like F8. Then, then that way we've got a little, we've got eight pixels on either side, but that should remove it then. And then I can get rid of this because we don't need that. And that should be fixed now. We shouldn't see that problem at all. Awesome. Yeah, so the problem was is if a bullet is going up the screen, uh, it can go it can move from um it can move from zero one to zero zero before it get so it was only being removed from the screen if it was F zero to FF. But in order to get to FF, if it's going up the screen it has to go zero one, zero zero, FF. Uh, because the delta is uh, more than one, so it's moving like one point four or something like that. It only happened every one in every, well, maybe two out of every three or four, two out of every three or four. Um, shouldn't, shouldn't this code block be temporary? Yes, it will be. It's in the temporary section. So I just wanted to understand what was happening, if it was part of the temporary thing or not, and it is. So um, we shouldn't see this now, and we can work on the collision, which is good, which means I'm going to take a big old gulp of wine and we'll work on character collision but yeah we shouldn't see that thing happen at all now you can sit here all day and it won't, it won't find it so actually do we do character collision or do we do sprite collision first i think we should do sprite collision because sprite collision is what's going to get us killed right so um let's put that in first and we can always disable it um 
uh, if if need be. But yeah, let's do that. So the, we're going to do this by looking at the laser. That's working fine now, which is good. Yes, that's not bad. So it's what two two hours it's taken us to get that kind of going. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't always go to plan. Um, just happy it is is working now. All right. Um, so we do have a laser collision. So I want to look at the laser because that's the only other thing I can think of that has this collision. And I want to just see if it's something we can strip out of the laser and put into something else. Now, the thing is, is if we strip it out of here, it might be better that we, because the laser is a dynamic piece of code as well, as well as the, uh, the aim torus is a dynamic piece of code. It might be better if we, import this as another piece of dynamic code if it is a collision the sprite collision or we find a space lower in memory and move something else into dynamic let's, let's have a look at how big it is let's see if it is reusable uh let's see how much memory we've got it'd be good if it was in permanent memory actually um i'm gonna work out where where we are at with memory Okay, so we've got a block down here in game code area um, that's not been used. We've got some game code high stuff up here. I can't remember what that's been used, but I think that is a I think that is a blank area that we've got free. Uh, we've also got the low code down here, which actually has quite a bit of space as well. That's just yeah, it's like uh, what's that? It's like two kilobytes or so, just just less than two kilobytes down there. Okay, so we've got we've got some room. So let's have a look at the collision. So we've got, um, what's this? This is laser collision. Okay, so laser collision is where the laser is hitting the scenery. Cats, pss, pss, stop it. Attacking each other. Just for fun, let's test four bullets at the same time and only one. Um, we can't have four. There's only two bullets we can have at the same time. Or do you mean let's uh, let's up the maximum turret? Okay, yeah, let's try that because it would be interesting. I have a feeling this is gonna this will cause glitches though. It might not do though. In which case, it would be quite interesting having all four going at the same time. But they get, the game only fires two at a time, I believe, so. Uh, oh. Uh, why are we not seeing, oh, because we need to add multiple, okay, yeah, we need to add multiple. So actually, this should be, uh, X and Y and color, okay, so I'm going to do the same here. So this is going to be, Uh, so this is just going to make sure that we generate the right amount of bullets for, for what we put. Uh, that can stay the same. The only thing that needs to change is this. Uh, so this just makes this dynamic so we can have, have more than more than what, more than than what two bullets or, yeah, multiple. But, yeah, it, it would be good to see see what happens here. And, and uh, you know, it helped tidy a bit of code up. So, yeah, that, there's absolutely more screens. With, I think there's... Andy said there's a screen with 10 turrets in it, so it's definitely uh, limited for that reason. But it would be interesting to see if the, if the system works. Bear in mind as well, we, we have performance stats. We don't store them, but we could store them for each screen, which means we could act, theoretically have a system where... Um... Are they actually firing? What's going on here? Oh, yeah, three on the screen at once then. Actually, if I go over this side, 
should even things out a little bit. If we go here. I mean, it seems to handle that quite well, actually. Oh, yeah, see, look, there's a tiny bit of flickering on these. I don't know if you can see that, but there was a bit of multiplex of flickering on that. So there is there is issues with that, just due to the number that's trying to render in the same position. Let's try it with one, though. It's interesting to see how it works. Uh, there are different shoot timers. Yeah, they. this is just to stagger them out. Um, but they should all reset back to this, the same value. They they uh, Actually, do they reset back to that value? Yeah, they reset back to uh, shoot rate. No, not shoot rate. They reset back to something. In fact, they should be removed as well. They should all start on zero. Well, zero, I mean, I don't really care if zero fails because it's a, it's a hard-coded value anyway, the maximum number of bullets. So. But we could tie that to performance as well. So on screens with lots, we could kind of, we could tie it down to, to less than uh, a certain amount. You know, we can, we can play around with it, basically. But yeah, let's let's see what happens with zero. But I, I don't really care if it fails here because... It's to kind of be expected. Um, I think what's going to happen is it's going to still show one, but we might get some overwrite because of the way the loops work. So we might just end up with a crash here, I think. That's my guess is it's going to crash, but I, I don't know. No, no. It, oh, because it's checking the active count, and the active count is zero, which is the maximum number of bullets. So, so actually, it's handling it. it. The thing is, is if it didn't check the active count, it would crash because what it would try and do when it went to update the bullets, it would loop. Um, actually, maybe it's checking the maximum. Oh yeah, no, this is oh, surprisingly surprising. Yeah, surprisingly robust. Cool. All right. Well, let's put it back to two because that's what we have on that screen. Uh, we can possibly change this to be a, a byte somewhere in memory. So this can be changed on a per screen basis, or we can make it a, a, an initialization variable or something if we need to. Uh, we don't particularly need to, though, at the moment. But what we are interested in is uh, the laser collision. So what we're looking at here is not what is called laser collision in here. Laser collision is where the laser hits the scenery. We're not interested in that. Uh, because that's actually pre-calculated it's just a table that which we load in through here that's a whole thing that's going to be an absolute nightmare when we get to other other um other screens but for now it's fine we can we can deal with it like this i think laser is going to be redone at some point uh to a much simpler but memory inefficient way uh, just because there's screens with like four lasers on which could get nasty so but what we do need to do is we need to check the player versus the uh oh actually look we have load player player sprite collisions interesting uh and what do we check against here if it's zero we don't do anything oh i th i think this is already handled collision sprite collision Oh, no, we do have to call that. See, I feel like this needs to be on a per screen basis. Uh, so instead of this being called in the update function here, we call this in the screen update itself. But then again, saying that, it's only, the only reason we're doing it is because of the turret. So... But if we have more than one type of sprite on the screen, we don't want to call this multiple times.
Yeah, I think I'm going to move that as well. So, uh, do you know what? For now, I'll leave it in here. But what I'm going to do is when we when we run this screen in here, so we've got the aim turrets update. So we'll do we'll do that. We'll update the entities. Uh, actually, we'll do the collision check here. So there, we, we're calling a sprite collision check in here. And what that's going to do is it's going to set the sprite collision data in here. So let's just grab all that, put this in aim turrets. Okay. So aim turrets actually need to check. So we do need the turret to actually check. And we're going to do this on um, on the update, after the bullets of update. So here's where we update the bullet positions, and there's the loop. So the very last thing we can do now is check the collision versus bullets. Oh, the other thing we need to do is flash those bullets as well, so they flicker between white and red as well. Everything that's kind of dangerous and attacks you kind of flashes between white and red. Okay, so we're going to load our player collisions. Um, uh, let's call this exit here. And uh, let's get rid of that one there. And let's put exit here. Right, okay. So if there are no player collisions, we exit. That's fine. Now we need to check against the bullets. Now the bullets are not the values that are here. The bullets actually have different sprite indices and those sprite indices are gonna be decided, and they're gonna be decided in the init function, I guess. Yeah. Store X, data bullet sprite index. So we do have sprite indexes here, so. Now, for the sake of speed, because collision can be quite slow, I'm going to do this by uh, doing a loop here. Um, and what we check in here, so we can exit. Right, let's check. So we would check. Data bullets dot sprite index plus zero, and this needs to be a for loop again. Otherwise, if it's equal to zero, jump to collide. What's this bit about here? I don't quite get that one. Nope. Thank you. Since 604. Oh, all three of you went in for that. <laughs> I'm going to give Andy five points because he was first on that one, so... I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a points for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's points. The fact that you all said it means I'm gonna give somebody points, so <laughs> Okay, right. So the question is is why is this branch equal happening here? What is this about? Um let's go and just have a quick look at the collision method and see what it's doing. Uh, so we've got collision, sprite collisions, check player versus all but the mass. So we check against everything. At this point, the players involved in collision, sprite zero are in five are involved in collision. So we need to confirm these collisions are the same. Um, oh, now we're checking against the bounds width of the sprite, which means we're going to be checking against the whole. Hmm. Just the type of the assembly. Yeah, okay. That's, that's fine. I'm feeling generous tonight, as you can see. It's fine. So the problem here that we've got is we're checking against sprites based on a just a general bounds width for the sprites. Now, that's fine for the majority of kind of sprite-to-sprite -sprite collisions, but... Um, Oh, actually, no, because this is going to show a collision. 
Oh, this is interesting. The problem is, is a sprite bandwidth is not small value we think it is. So I feel like we we should be adding some we should be adding some width values in here as well. But what this is actually doing is it's is checking so it's using hardware collision first. And then it's checking to see if those two sprites actually are overlapped. So it might be all right. Um, if not, we need to do some. We need to do some uh, some kind of clarification of those values. Let's let's assume it is for now. Um, the question is, why does it collide though? If we collision, we go ahead. So if we get a zero. And that gets stored at player sprite collisions. That should mean we don't have any collisions, right? But what we're seeing in here is we compare. Oh, if it's the same. Ah, okay. So this is if it's if it's less than the base index, then we exit. If it's zero, we exit. If it's Wait, why is that one even in there? I feel like that should be... If it's less than that, but we haven't already branched from here. So another way, if it's the same as this. Because this looks like it should be... Oh wait, no, this is uh this is a range, this is why. This is a range of values. This is a range of values, okay. Uh what I'm not sure. Doesn't sprite collision actually a check only fixed pixels? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it's probably gonna be alright. Um, because it's checking, it's going to check filled pixels against filled pixels. But in the case where there are three sprites overlaying, um, it will additionally do some bounds checks to make sure that the two that you're interested in are the ones that are actually touching. Um, that is where the grey area comes in, and it may actually um, may actually cause us some issues. Okay, but this is this is a this is a range. So base index zero is the beginning of the laser. Base index one is the end of the laser, which is why we're seeing these weird branches here. So basically what that means we need to do is we need to check if the bullet sprite index. Um, wait, hang on. Wait, should it should it just add one sprite in? Hang on, does it add more than one in or? So at this point, I was going to come over these collisions are the same. So where does it add? Okay, it adds here. So if one has collided, then it immediately exits if it's collided with something that we're checking. Okay, let's do Okay. So I think it's probably fine if I do... Uh, if equal collide here. I think that's enough. Let's see what happens. I think that's probably going to work. The problem with reusing code, especially in assembly, is it's not always that easy to understand, especially when you wrote that. I mean, that was probably written six months ago. So actually, probably not six months ago, because I think we had the laser collision not that long ago. But um But now I should die if one of these hits me. And I'm not. Okay. So, oh, I did there. See? Ah, interesting. So why didn't I die when they all hit me? Interesting. Okay. Um, 
also don't need that because that's uh actually do we need to no we do need to that needs to be yes oh, not jmp okay uh because we need to also remove the bullet as well actually we could remove the bullet first but well we'll come back to that in a minute the question is why is it not picking up all the collisions only some shields <laughs> uh i didn't have an rts after a jump Oh yeah, I did actually do just do. I'm going to give steps five points. I'm feeling really generous tonight. I'm trying to trying to get to the point where uh, nobody knows who's going to win. So if you want points, tonight's your chance. Uh, so why there are two checks and. So is it a case of right? So first of all, do I die if I just hit the hit the turret top? No. Okay. Interesting. What about if I? Oh no, I'm not sure if that was because I see. Do you know what? I can check. I can set the uh, uh, turrets to zero. Right. <laughs> I mean, I should die if I hit them anyway. I think so. He's failed to put it incorrectly somewhere. 100 points to me. <laughs> Today's word all pissed me off. I, I took me five goes to get it, which was a bit annoying. Should the plus zero be plus I? Oh, Prow, you may have hit on something there. If I've left plus zero in there, then yes, you, you are absolutely right. Uh, boom, Prow seven. It's another five pointer. Actually, uh, do you know what? That's, that's, mm, is that a five or is that a 10? Ooh, I don't know on that one. I'm going to give it five because I think it would have been picked up pretty pretty quickly. Start to use your starting words uh, using Wordle, but I find it's more fun to use different words each time. Feels feels kind of more risky. Somebody told me a really good starting word today, audio, because it has four vowels in it. I mean, that's fucking brilliant. That get, basically nails the vowels on the first go. Yeah, audio is a really good one. So I'm I'm going to try that one uh, in the morning. The only thing I don't like about it is it has a D D instead of any other value. But I mean, I can't imagine another word that has four vowels in it like that. Uh, definitely the the best word I've seen so far. So I'm, I'm going to switch to using that, and then I just need a really good second word. But I think it's actually enough to give you a chance of getting it on the second word. Because if you get enough of the vowels in the right place, PPS4. <laughs> if you get enough of the vowels in the right place, um, then you narrow it down. That's what it comes down to, right? If you get the words in the right order, then you narrow it down. The reason I like rays is because it has R and S, and R and S are two letters that if you get them in your word, and you you can kind of you kind of get a good idea where they would fit and where they wouldn't fit, uh, and that's why I like hound is the second one because both uh, n and h are really easy to place in the word. Um, like if your eight h is in uh, second place, you know the first the first letter is going to be a c, an s, or a t, almost definitely. I mean, it could be other things, but it's very very likely to be. Uh, one of these, so the E helps if it's at the end as well. Three brown, one blue. Didn't roll some overture of this problem. Sorry if you haven't seen it. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. I've got had quite a few um, three turn guesses. I could have had at least two of them, at least two of my streak so far, and I think I'm on like a 25 streak or something like that. Um, at least two of them could have been could have been done in two turns. If I hadn't, my 
my my habit is to do um to do a word do I, I started with raise and then I put a hound as a second word. But sometimes there's been at least twice where I've had enough letters in the first from the raise to work it out in the second go if I'd have just stopped and thought about it. But I'm too quick to type in hound on the second go. So I'm I'm trying to stop and think about it when I get a couple of letters right in the first one to see if I can figure it out. Because I could have figured it out quite easily on, on at least two of them. Um and got it in it, got it in two. I've never had it in two. Three I've had a few times, but I've never had it in two. I like it. I think it's a really good strategic game. I love it. Okay, right. So I think this should work now. I think Paris 7 has, has fixed the problem. The, the problem was, it was we were only dying if it was bullet zero. If it was bullet one, it was doing nothing to us. Seriously, that's a word. Is that a valid word or word? If that's a valid word or word, that's going to be the best, best one because it's got an E in it and it's got a T in it. Is it valid in Wordle, though? Because bear in mind that Wordle doesn't... Not everything is valid in, in, in Wordle, unfortunately. Like, they've taken the word bitch out as well. New York Times has taken it out. Oh, I've still got the turret set to zero, haven't I? I'm sat here waiting for him to fire. I'm going to try that tonight because if that if that works, that's a really really good word. They've taken lots. Of, they've taken lots of words out. They've taken lots of words that can be interpreted. Um... Oh, somebody do it quick while I'm doing this. I need to know if that word is in. <laughs> I need to know if that word is in the valid list. If it is, that's going to be great. That is going to be awesome. Boom, there we go. So the only thing I think we need to do is we need to remove the uh remove the bullet if it if it hits you. So let's let's do that. Let's make sure that the bullet disappears. So um Oh, actually, yeah, this is this is kind of okay. Because what we're doing here is we're not checking... We're just checking specific bullets. So this should be all right. I, I worry, though, if we get into a specific position down here, uh, like where we're... Oh, no, because it did... Oh, actually, yeah, this I think this might work. I'm just trying to think if there's any weird position. There's going to have to be some testing around areas with sprite collisions, so there's just going to have to be some um, some caveats to say. Uh, working out the word from the password hash. There's some really good exercises actually in in uh, cryptography around around messing with with password hashing algorithms, like insecure password hashing algorithms, um, and finding. Um, finding how things like kind of reverse engineering it basically like one of the things is i can't remember what it is now but there's like a a technique called a padding oracle so there's um one of the ways that were the um uh data is encoded is it's encoded in a kind of chunks if you like of data so if you imagine encoding something on the c64 you probably do it eight bytes at a time right you take eight bytes you'd encode that and you take another eight bytes and encode it so if you've got something that's less than um that isn't an exact number of bytes long um then you've got you've got basically uh you know eight bytes eight bytes and then three bytes so you'd have to add it with five other bytes um, and there are some there are some techniques uh, called oracle oracle padding techniques, and you can kind of reverse engineer like what's going on by changing uh, something and seeing how the padding changes and stuff. And yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of cool. There's, there's lots of little stuff like that. I can't remember the exact things. Cryptography is a complicated thing to try and remember everything in. Uh, 
but yeah, there's some there's some pretty cool stuff. So Wordle only has a subset. Where, yeah, padding the CBC mode is block ciphers. That's it. Yeah. So the, the the way that those block ciphers work is they they they're done in chunks, aren't they? And if the if the chunks aren't exactly the same length, they have to be padded out to um, to fit the length. I knew it was something like that. So Wordle only has a subset of words. Yeah. So it has two two. Well, it has it has a, a subset. And then a subset of that subset. So there's a subset of valid guess words, and then there's another subset of that list which are valid answers. Uh, so not every word in the word list will could be an answer. So there's only there's there's a smaller list which is the list of answers, and then there's a slightly bigger list which is valid words that you can use to to do the guess. Padded icons, yeah, yeah, CBC, blah blah blah. blah. Sorry, yeah. There's some really really good. I did some. Um, God, what was it called? I think it might have been Padded Oracle. Actually, I think we did some we did some challenges at work. We occasionally do like um, cryptography and kind of hacking challenges, and one of them was a Padded Oracle one. I was really interested in learning about it. Thing is, with those things, I forget about them so quickly. Um, that's who is not in the Scrabble dictionary. Damn it! Okay, cool. Right, so let's remove the bullet, and we're 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 almost there. Then with this, we just need to do the the uh, the scenery collision. My God, this is this is going well. We might actually get onto the next screen on the next stream. Uh, okay, so here's where we remove the bullet. So let's actually remove the bullet again uh, when we when we collide. So uh, we did collision here. We do the kill play. So we can do. We can jump to that subroutine. So even though we jump to it um, directly in here and return from there, here we can call it as a subroutine. So we can do update bullet, pause, remove bullet. So the only thing I would like to do at this point is if we do remove the bullet, I think we should also kind of change its uh, its Y pause so that when it gets drawn on the screen, actually, does it get drawn if it's not active? uh let's have a look so oh we'd have to do something like this okay it's fine we can do this so when we remove the bullet which we do down here we'd also like to do this so we're going to take the x register we're going to grab the sprite index for that bullet and then we're going to take the value one zero or something or, or let's do let's do yeah let's do one zero off screen and put that in the Y pause. It's just going to make sure that the bullet disappears off screen so you don't see it. So that's pretty good. Adieu is a pretty good one. Acqui. Acqui is a, a massive waste though because it's got the Q in it. You're never going to need the Q. One that has a T in it or an N would be good. Uh... Also, I think if you have four, it's better to not have the uh, uh, the U. I think it's better to have the A E I O. Um, wait, those are all valid in in Wordle. Yeah, in the Switch version they have a trail. Though they're not going to have a trail in this one. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I would favour or or whatever it is, what it is there, over any of the other ones. I think I'm going to try them out later, anyway. Yeah. So yeah, the bullet does have a have a trail, but we're not going to add that in. We're just going to flash the, the 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 bullet here instead. Um, so if we're just going to have a look again. We're going to have a take a quick look at the laser and see how the laser does the flash. Um, draw line, laser color, frame timer. Okay, so this is this is how the color is being done. So let me just grab that or we'll duplicate that uh, code there. And laser color, I'm guessing, is a value up here. Yeah. Okay.
So what we actually want to do is grab the value in here. Like so. The fact that it's not a, a complete list of five letter words as well, like it is a it is a subset of five letter words means that there is a difference between the most popular letters in the English language um, and the most popular letters in the five in five letter words and the most popular letters in five letter words that are valid wordle words. So there is a there is a huge difference between those three well well I assume there is a huge difference between those three lists. They're not going to be the same data, right? You'd assume that they'd be fairly similar. You'd assume that certain letters are going to be more common than others. But for instance, if you were to look at um, three-letter words, um, you would expect certain uh, certain um, letters to rarely appear at all, and other words to appear an awful lot. Or other letters to appear an awful lot. Um, and the same applies for five-letter words. You know, there's going to be patterns in there that means... Um, checking the most common letters that are used in the English language versus the most common letters that are used in five letter words is going to be different. Um, you think the difference is near zero? Do you think? Oh, I'm not. I'm not entirely convinced. You know. Oh, actually, maybe that. Maybe what Andy's posted there actually has the has the same thing. Or maybe we're just thinking about it too much. We're, we're going all nerdy on it, aren't we? We're, 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 we've gone oh, uber nerdy on it, and we're just thinking about it too too much. Just, just enjoy it, guys. <laughs> just enjoy it. All right, let's let's see. Hopefully, this is going to remove the bullets now. And they're flashing, which is looking good. Oh, they get removed. Are they made in act? Oh, hang on. I feel like once we've been shot twice, the bullet is absorbed. Player remove bullet. Update player remove bullet. Which is. I feel like it's not actually removing the bullet properly. Like it's removing it, but it's not deactivating it. Although it should be because it, this should deactivate it. Okay, we don't need the X because that. Oh no, that X is turret index setting the shoot timers. Interesting. Why would moving off screen cause it to stop? Like, would cause it to no longer be removed, right? So let me just check that this is the case. If I just remove that, does it still work? I guess it will because it will continue on, but is it... Is something not removing it correctly or something weird is going on? I'm not sure what it is. I feel like when it calls remove bullet, it should just freeze. The bullet should freeze in place if I'm not moving it off screen. But it doesn't. It continues. And then doesn't shoot again. Now, removing the bullet at that point is the wrong thing to do. By the way, collisions don't work in the border. We don't need them to work in the border. It's fine. Um, 
the problem is, is if I call this at all, it stop the bullets kind of stop adding. They like they stop. Well, if I call this and then I kill the player, it fails. If I remove that, so it doesn't remove the bullets. Take bullet pulse, remove bullet. Should have Y as the bullet index. Oh, which it doesn't at this point. Ah, okay. Uh... No, no, that's not right. We need I, don't we? So I would be this one. Okay, maybe we do need to do this as a loop. All right, so this would be... <sighs> Why? That's why. It's because what was happening was the bullet was, um, it was trying to remove the bullet, but it didn't know what the bullet was. There was no index for it. The fact that we weren't going to crash there was a bit of a miracle, to be honest. I see it was probably because what was happening was the bullet was always zero at this point. So we were just getting to a point where there was no, no more bullets to properly remove. I think they should be right. Yeah, point redeems are not, not working, unfortunately. Uh, 404 on the title, really? Oh man. <laughs> yeah, Twitch is Twitch is being a pain, so I'm gonna have to work through my overlay and um and sort it out. Hopefully I can fix it before Thursday. Yeah, okay, so that worked. So the bullet's freezing in place, and the reason the bullet's freezing in place is because we don't actually remove it. Uh, where's this will? So it should fix those issues. Right, and then we're on to the final step, which is collision with the scenery, uh, which should be a bit easier to do, I think, uh, than, than it sounds. It sounds like it should be difficult, but I don't think it will be. I think it'll be quite easy. We have everything in place pretty much, so... We only just escaped that one. I feel like they're spending a little bit, not quite long enough uh, in any particular one color. So I'm just going to change that uh, just to tweak things a little bit. Uh, where did I just jump to then? Oh, wrong file. That's why. There we go. Hello. You come to say hello. Come in then. Come and say hello. This is mine, not yours. <laughs> Uh, will there be some kind of explosion when the bullet hits something? Uh, we could add particles, yeah. Um, if it hits the player, we don't need it because the player creates an explosion. If it hits a bullet, we don't need it because we can make the bullet show a decal. Or do we? No, actually, that won't happen because the bullet... 
need to think. Yeah, bullet, bullets is the one that we need to think about. If it hits the wall, uh, no, it will just disappear. So we could maybe add a decal there as well. Um, we could add decals. I think we can use the decals the same as, uh, rather than use the particle system, we may as well just use the bullet decal system. Um, that's kind of what it's there for, right? So, uh, mace. Oh, yeah, mace. That's a good point. What happens if the mace hits it? I need to check that in the game, actually. How are the decals implemented? In a similar way to the particle system, but... Unlike the particle system, they um, they can be placed anywhere on the screen because they don't they're not a dynamic uh, character. It's just a it's just a sequence animation. So in the game, it kills the bullet. Okay. So oh, we should check that in a minute. Actually, we should check that in a minute because I think what might happen at the moment is you might die we need to think about how that works yeah you can shoot the bullet in the game you'll definitely be able to shoot the bullet but we will have to add a decal in for that i think we probably have to add a decal in if it's the side as well everything else i think should be all right um i think the mace hitting it it's probably not a big deal, actually. The mace hitting it is kind of all right. Maybe we can get that to spawn a decal as well. Or maybe we just have it when the bullets disappear, they just give off two particles or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll have a think about that. But there, that's definitely something we can add in. Um, for now, I just want to change the timer on that bullet. I also want to see how big this file is. Um, have we actually got a, a marker at the end here to say? Into a dynamic cut, we do. All right, so somewhere in here, we should have a thing to say where it, it's up to in, in memory. F7C0. So we're using we're using about two kilobytes. It's not bad actually, considering the size of the tables as well. The tables account for half a kilobyte, so we're using about one and a half kilobyte just for. Um, for code although saying that we've also got these values as well so there are uh 10 aim turrets and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 values so that that's almost you know 150 bytes then the bullet ones as well so you're looking you're looking at you know closing in on a kilobyte on data as well because you've got these this bit of data here as well for characters uh some some random bytes here and there as well so it's about a kilobyte of code and about a kilobyte of data give or take a few we can kind of change that slightly by um actually we can't because that's oh, yeah we can this could be done in a loop as well instead of max bullets is only two though. I mean, that's not going to make a huge difference. Although add Sprite is actually, let's do that quickly. Cause I think this is probably a good idea. Uh, so we're just kind of changing this into a loop. The reason I'm changing this into a loop is because it's in the init function, so it doesn't need to um, it doesn't need to be particularly fast, uh, and it has a macro in it, and that macro has probably got quite a lot of code in it. So um, so it makes sense for this to be done um, efficiently. So what we're on uh, F7C0. So let's have a look what this has changed it to. Probably not a huge difference, but it will be a little bit different. It should be exactly the same. That would be funny, wouldn't it? The macro just happens to be so small that it doesn't make any difference. Uh, 
wait, it is exactly the same. How is that? That no. Well, firstly, I've got to increment the Y. So it's about, okay. Yeah, I've copied it from the from the game. So the game is is a as a cross. It's exactly the same size as it is in the game. Oh no, the turret was again. Oh no, I need to check. Ah oh, no, I need to check the bullets. Yeah, you're right. So I was thinking about the the cross thing. Um, how how is this the same size? That doesn't make any sense. I just need to go look at that screen macro a second. Oh, because it calls this. So, this, mind you, that is still quite a lot to do twice. So, it should be smaller. It should definitely be smaller. Maybe I scrolled too far up the list, and I. No, no, there we go. Okay, uh, for some reason it is the same size either way. Uh, I'm going to leave it as it is, though. This is this is correct still. So oh, uh, I don't know which one's the latest one there. Probably the one on the far right, but. I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to relaunch. The macro uh, adds a sprite at a specific location on the screen uh, to the multiplexer. And returns the index. I didn't just add an in any though. What I did was uh, stop the macro running twice and add a bit of a loop around it. I, I didn't add um, just one command. I added a block of commands. It just happens. I think it just happens that the macro is about the same size as as the code that I added. So it's it's not changed things. Plus, there's probably some alignment going on as well, which is is locking it to that. So there's probably like an align one zero in there as well. So unless I change it by a significant amount, um, uh, there isn't an align in here, really. There's got to be an align in here. I mean, it's built. That's the thing. It has built, and it's not causing any other problems. Oh no, there's this. Yeah, so this starts bright area. So this is an aligning it to a 64 byte boundary. So yeah, it made zero difference because I'm aligning it to a 64 byte boundary. So um, it really doesn't matter. I have I have made it smaller up there, so I've got a bit more room to fill out at the bottom of the file. Uh, but unless I make it Cross that 64 byte boundary, it's not going to change the size, which is why it's the the end byte is FCC zero. It's exactly on a on a on a byte boundary, uh, so it's fine. I probably have saved some bytes in terms of the code up there, but I've not saved bytes because this there's there's a gap here. I probably just made this gap a little bit bigger. That's here. Um, that's all I've done. I knew it'd be in a line or something like that, right? Um, Okay, uh, let's just make sure everything works. No, it doesn't. Why doesn't it work? What did I do? Shit, what did I do? Save, undo, undo. Increase Y, blah, blah, blah. Oh, because I'm probably using the Y in here. Shit, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to do all of that then. Just going to put it back how it was. Probably not saving that much anyway by um, by doing that because the the routine is only the routine's not that big. If you look, this is the routine that I'm doing right. So if I do this twice, uh, I would have to store the Y. So to do this in a loop, I'd have to store the Y and, and restore it again. Um, I would save a couple of bytes, but it wouldn't be a huge amount. Um, 
fuck it, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I, I can't I can't bring myself not to do it. Okay. It's, it, it bugs me that it bugs me that I'm not doing it, so I'm I'm gonna have to do it. All right. So that basically just means here we need to So as I say, it's not going to make any difference to the size generally. But if we look at what we would have done, um, so before what we would have done, this would have been a loop. So we would we've added uh, that would have been about the same. So we've added this and this. So four bytes, five bytes, uh, eight bytes, nine bytes, uh, eleven. Uh, th 13 bytes. So as long as the macro is less than 13 bytes, so 2, 4, 6, 9, 11, 14. It saved a byte, saved a single byte doing that. In which case, I'm going to put it back because I think it was neater. It was neater. For the sake of one byte, I really don't care. Uh, if it makes it look neater, I'm all for it because it, it was, yes, it saves with a single byte, but really um, it's not. Um, when we have three bullets, it's more, ah, shit. I mean, thing is, I don't think we're ever going to have three bullets though, but you're right. What if we do? Fuck. Fuck's sake. <laughs> I'll stop changing it in a minute. All right. All right. Let's let's go with that. Let's go with that. Let's just make sure it all works. <laughs> wow. I've never been back and forth on code quite as much as I just did then. That was kind of crazy. This game is not taking that long. It's You've got to remember that I'm doing this game. All right. This is, what, episode 61. But this game has never spent more than about two hours a night on it. This is only three weeks worth worth of work, really, if you think of a working week. This is the this is the thing that people forget with these games is that none of these games are actually taking that long. They're just spread out over a lot of time. And I would and as I've I've said this many, many times before, I would much rather even if I, even if it was taking ages, I would much rather spend twice as long making a game and release a game that's right and perfect and and has all the things I want in it than just rush out some shit every fucking week. I just don't want to do that. Sorry, it sounds like I'm ranting. I'm not ranting. I'm just just saying. It does sound like I'm ranting, doesn't it? I, I don't. I don't mean to rant. That's not what I'm doing. Yeah, developers are kind of spoiled nowadays. They can put kind of well. It's not even the developers. The developers aren't spoiled because they still have to do the work. But the um, publishers can just release any old shit now because they know that they can patch it later. And that's why games, the quality of kind of games on releases, is, is taking a nosedive because you didn't used to be able to do that. Is it a lifetime service game? Yeah, this is a service game. It's going to be patched every week. Okay, cool. Let me just double check everything works, and then we'll spend the next half an hour see if we can just get the at least the basics of the background collision in. Should be pretty easy to do. Sweet. All right. Seems to be working. Uh, Forgetting range, bullets fire. Yeah. So there are some slight differences. So there are some differences to what we see in the main game. Uh, primarily the range thing. So if I sit up here, nothing will shoot because I'm out of range. Um, the line of sight stuff. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember if we checked if it shoots through line of sight or not. Um, but if there is line of sight, we're not going to put that in. It's just not worth the effort to put it in. And we'll just have it shoot the wall and, and that's it. Um, the bullets don't have trails on them, um, which is, again, that's kind of fine. I think I have checked the bullet sizes, you know, because why would I have that shape otherwise? 
I'll, t- I'll check that before the next stream. I'll check that. I'm going to have my work cut out for me. I know getting this overlay to work. So I'm going to have to go through all the freaking code and work out all the things that they've broken. Uh, it shoots the world in the original snow line. It's like, okay, good. Goddamn Twitch making life difficult for me. Bastards. Uh, okay. So let's have a look. I might start doing. I might start doing some random. Once I get me um, my other computer, because I've still not done my other computer. I've just not had time. Flash is the aim site before firing. They do, and I don't think so. I might be wrong, but I don't think so. If it does, then shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I might uh, once I've got my my other computer set up, so I can actually capture gameplay from things. I might play some random games because I've got quite a lot of games coming. I've got like another fifty or sixty games coming this week, uh, and I'm going to go and buy a few more next week, depending on what I can find as well. Because I really want to get my N64 collection up. I want kind of everything in the N64 collection if I can if I can help it. I don't need I don't need. Um, I mean, we have a state machine, so this should be possible. Yeah, I mean, can we do it? Mm, well, yeah, I mean, we'd have to, yeah, we'd have to add an additional state. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We would have to add an additional state, but yeah, we could do it. It would just be in that stat flag. We'd just have, uh, we'd have like a preparing to shoot, like shoot prepare or something. But I, I don't know if it does that. I need to check the original. I can't remember. But before we do that, we're going to check the collision stuff. So collision is actually quite simple. All we need to do is for each bullet, we just need to grab a screen position. Once we've grabbed a screen position, we, we, we know what the character is. At that point, we can decide what we want to do with it. Uh, the characters are quite simple as well in that if a character is zero, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's not solid. If a character is less than the maximum number of um, possible font characters in the map, um, then it is solid. Anything else, it's, it's transparent or a bullet. Now, the thing with the bullets is if it is a bullet, we need to check that differently as well. So there'll be two two separate checks here. Stormtrooper aim state. Um, so we need to find the collision. Okay, so we've got some collision here. Okay, let's jump to this section here. And let's call this, uh, wait, was this checking? Check collision versus bullets. So this is checking the player collisions against the player. Okay, that should stay there then because that is just an exit from the function. And that's a collide. Collide is any time the bullet hits anything. Uh, well, actually the collide is the time the bullet hits Okay, so we might have to do this separately again. Okay, so this should be collide player. Let's call that just so we don't get confused later on if we have another collide in there. Okay, so I think what we need to do is in the update bullet position, we then need to do the check. So we'll do the check in here instead, which is in this one. So if the bullet has not been removed, um, then we can to this position here. So at this point... Uh, We're still using edges here to determine whether we remove the bullet. That's not going to be the case pretty soon. Is there a case where that might be a problem? Well, there is a pos possibility that the bullets shoot off a gap at the edge of the screen. So we will need this actually in place. Um, so we will need this check, definitely. So that can now be... Uh, okay, so let's let's put some notes in here. So... And check why. So we're going to check if the if we've actually uh, hit the uh, hit the bounds of the screen. Uh, now the bounds check X is going to be a little bit different. So the bounds check X needs to also check the MSB. So we need to make sure that is correct as well. So what that means we need to do is we need to um. We need to do two different checks based on based on the MSB. So if the MSB is uh, 
zero, we'll do a low check. Otherwise, we're going to do a high check. So the high check is checking uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, at which point we're going to um, load that value into the accumulator. Can we use, actually, can we use the X register here? Yes, we can. Okay. Because that's used there. Okay, right. So we could do... So we can load the accumulator and we can load the X register. We'll, we'll immediately check um, the X register to see if it's zero. I put the low check in here. And now the accumulator is the same at both sides of this. And we'll put check done here. Or oh, just done. So the high check, what do we check? We're going to check the accumulator to see if it's more than four zero. Why four zero? Well, four zero is the far right of the screen, but we've got the border on that side, so it needs to be five eight. So five eight is uh, 88 plus 256 gives us 336. If you take the, no, that's not right. 88 plus 256 is 200 and uh, 344 god i can't add correctly what do you put no it's not basically what i need to do is check the this value so the value needs to be 256 which is the length of the the normal size of the screen um actually well it's this that's the width of the visible screen plus the side border which is 24 so it's 344 but we want the we want the lower byte of that. So that is 44.88. Yeah, I was right. Fuck's sake, uh, 88. All right, so that's correct. So we just want to know if the value is that. If it is more or equal to that, uh, then we've gone off the screen and we can just jump to remove bullet straight away. And then we can just do that so we don't have to do a jump. Uh, and then here we can do... Uh, Compare with one eight, so we want to see are we less than one eight? In which case, we've gone off the left hand border. The sprite itself is a couple of pixels wide, so we're just going to knock a few off. Uh, three, let's do four actually. We want to know if we're less than that, otherwise, we're done. So, this is our bounds check X, and that's our bounds check Y. So, we've done all the bounds checking that we need to do. We can get rid of the temp, we don't need to do that. Um, let's just put tail call return in here so we know what these are doing. Let's get rid of them. Right, so there's our bounds checks. Let's make this a bit more. I feel like this is all indented wrong. Yes, this bit's indented wrong, isn't it? Damn it, that was right. Call this exit here. We've actually got an exit location. Right. So the next thing we need to do is uh, get uh, wait. Why have we only checked one value here? Oh, because we are only checking one at a time. The loop is not done in here. It's done outside of this. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we just need to make sure that Y stays the same. So um, uh, so we need to get, get a screen location. Okay, so we need to turn the position of the sprite into a character position and then use the character position to get the screen position so uh this is a relatively slow thing but it shouldn't be too bad because we're only doing two bullets at a time so it's only going to be a couple of raster lines at most to check these bullets but once we've checked once we've got the screen location um and i think it should be like two or three raster lines to get the screen located two two raster lines maybe to get a single screen location um once we've got that, actually checking it against other collisions is actually quite quick. So, is there an auto format for kick assembly code? I don't know, and if it, if there is, I'd need to set it to do what I want it to do anyway. So 
So it's a good point. I can never even remember what auto format is in this. I don't use it that often. Uh, 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 uh. Can't remember where it is. I, th I think it's uh, it's a plugin, isn't it? I think for in Sublime. Okay, 20 minutes. Can I do this? I think I can. Right. So we need to grab X position. So we've got the X position here. So this is our, let's do uh, X pause first, right? So X pause. Um, we need to load the accumulator with our XMSB value. And we need to shift that to the right in order to half it, basically. Um, and then we need to load the accumulator with this value and we need to roll that to the right and that's going to make sure that the carry flag comes in so now we have the half x so at this point now we've got the half x in the accumulator so we can continue to divide this um and then we need to subtract the border away from it so the accumulator contains half the X. Let's divide it down into character X as well. So let's uh, let's keep shifting it. We don't need to roll it now. So it's now becomes divided by four, and that's divided by eight. So now we've got the value. We've got the X pos divided by eight. But that doesn't give us the exact position because our character position is starts inwards. So the, the sprite position starts at zero. The character position starts at one eight. So that's three characters across. So what we need to also do here is we need to subtract three from it. Uh, so uh, sub order to get, uh, let's put subtract, sub order makes it sound weird. Let's go chart pause. Uh, okay, so, um, so now we've got a char position so let's store that at a uh, char x which is going to be a, a value down here somewhere okay so to do the y we can pretty much do the same thing we don't need the msb here obviously we only got y pos So divide by eight. Right. Now this time the border is 50 pixels down. So 50 is a little bit awkward because it's not quite um actually we are gonna have to do this slightly different, I think. So we can subtract the, the border here. So on this one the border is exactly a character, exactly a division of characters wide. So do need sub two to get from third chart to first. No. There's three characters in the border, zero, one, and two. So our first character is zero, and the first character in the screen is three. So in order to get there, we need to subtract three. Sorry, you made me you made me confused then. I had to think about that. I was thinking, is he right? I think he might be right there. Naughty Andy. There we go. Border colors. Okay, so subtract border. And now y divided by eight, and that gives us our y pos. Now, what we're going to do here, we need to keep the y, but we can mess around with the x register, I think. Yes, we can mess around the x register. So we're going to transfer that into the x register. So our, our y register is now, uh, our y, uh, our y char pos is now in the x register. So now we can do. Do we actually have a tables? I hope we do. And I hope it has the screen positions in here. Tables, screen row, there we go. Screen row LSB, that's exactly what we need. And we're gonna use self mod here as well. So I'm gonna put screen or zero. 
because I don't see any reason we'd need to, to fetch this value twice. We just need to know what is under that location. That is it. It's a single single character, so there's no point in using indirect. So I wanted to argue against no reels and didn't say you were right. Yeah, it's just like hmm. I like it though. It keeps me on my toes. This is this is this is what Andy's job is: keep me on my toes, make me doubt myself. How come you're not working tonight? Anyway, Andy, I think you you must be loving this. You got a day off. Not that I'm saying I don't want you here, of course, but um... points for Andy for what? No, he he was wrong. <laughs> he doesn't get points. He should get minus points. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Oh, just for being you? No, 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 no. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make it a lot harder for you to get points tonight. No, no, he he was wrong. So the the border is 24 pixels wide, um, on the side. So in order to to take a character position from the sprite, you need to subtract three characters from it because the border is three characters wide. So it's three that we need to remove. Okay, so we've got our screen position, and now this is where we can we can grab this value. So we're going to load X with our chart X. Okay, so let's do the most basic check first, right? So let's just do the check that if the bullet is zero, we don't do anything. Uh, otherwise, we jump to Clyde. So let's say if it's equal, we don't do anything. Fastest exit out of here. This is going to be the one that's the most common, and therefore it's the one that we want to be first. Whenever you're doing a branch that has several kind of checks in it, always try and order your checks in the order that they're most likely. Then that way you're executing the least amount of code possible on any... any uh, average run sort of thing so <laughs> so in this case we're just going to jump straight to exit if the value is zero uh, otherwise we're going to jump to um remove bullet uh, we're just going to actually remove the bullet from the from the screen and that's it now it's not always going to be um remove bullet there, there is going to be more here which is why i've not just done branch if not equal remove bullet because there's going to be extra checks in here but for now we're just going to do the remove bullet this should at least make sure that the bullets hit the scenery even if they don't uh, create decals and it'll be enough for us to see some checks here and make sure everything's working correctly um i think we might actually get onto the next screen on the next next episode i'm kind of, kind of looking forward to that and as i say every time we do this um yeah there we go that's good Every time we do this, it gets a little bit easier to do the next screen. So, yeah, man, they're looking good now. They hit, hit each other as well, which is nice. Sweet. So I wonder about the decals. How easy is it going to be to put a decal in here? Let's have a look at how the decals work. Bearing in mind that decals is probably one of the first things I coded way back in the day. So uh, this is going to be fun to try and work out. Add decal. Okay, so if we add a decal in, the X register is our X pos, the accumulator is our Y pos. How does it work out where we're actually drawing the decal? Can it spawn the decal in the scenery? How does it work out? Oh, cause it, no, hang on. Okay, let's, let's, let's try and figure this out from.
Is it that simple? I mean, that feels very, very basic, but let's give that a try. Um, I feel like that can't possibly work, but okay, let's give it a try. So in the case when we remove this bullet, we're just removing the bullet. But that's could because it's off screen, it could be anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this here. which means we need to take some values. So we've got a value in the X register, which is our X value, which is great. So that means that doesn't need to be done. So let's put a little note in at the end to say, set from previous code. This, however, does need to be grabbed, but that value is already here in char X. And actually that's char Y, not char X. Oh, hang on. Char X is there. Char Y is this one. So it should be like that. Why pos already set in X? This code. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's, hang on. Oh, we just need to store it here. So store X, char Y. There we go. should work all right i can't i mean if this works this is kind of cool but i'm i'm not decaling threats will use the same temp variables i think you think oh add g temp one yeah you're right But is that, um, I mean, that can be changed. That can be changed to move to the end quite easily. But let me just have a look. So you are right. But does it matter at that point? Update bully position. Because I don't think it does matter at that position. No, because this function is a temporary. The, the G temps are scoped to the function that they're used in. So as long as they're not used, so as long as they weren't used in here, at the beginning, they'd be fine. Like they're, they're not being used up here, so it's fine. The fact that they're used in here is is fine as well. Um, so they should be all right. It's a scope thing, so they should be fine. That's kind of the idea of them. I, I I try to use two types of temporary variables. One that um, are uh, uh, IRQ safe, so they're only ever used in the IRQs, and I actually don't have any in this. I don't think. And then I have uh, global temps, which um, basically I try not to use them cross function. So I, I try to keep them so that they're scoped to just one function. So as long as the function runs and doesn't call anything else, which uses that function, uh, uses that temporary variable, then the value can be trusted. Uh, in this case, we 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 never call we're never nesting the usage of those things, so we should be fine. If there is a problem, I can always go in. I can just change um, the one in the decals to use a higher value, but I, I, I really don't think there will be. Right, let's close all of these windows. I think there was an error here, yeah. So it's char y. Oh, that should be. So using this self-mod code, I, I've got more and more confident using self-mod code. And the reason I like it is because it saves me storing that value somewhere else. I could store that in a temporary variable. But why would I have to load it in again? This way is much more. I save a few cycles. I save a byte by not having to store it anywhere. I save two bytes if I don't store it in zero page. Uh, so, yeah, it's in, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of... Oh, actually, no, you would still... 
you would actually you wouldn't save a bite because you would be storing absolute, but you'd save cycles, which is good. And I'm I'm really concerned about this the speed of this game, so I'm trying my damnedest to be optimal where possible. And plus, I just feel a lot more confident with uh, with that code now than I did before. Okay, there is definitely an issue with the collision off the screen, so I think the temp might be causing an issue here actually. Let's just have a think about this for a second. It could just be that the, the, the decals is just being really weird. Let's think about what it would do. So if we went in here, it would reset the G temp value. G temp is not used in in update bullet position directly. Update bullet position is used in this loop here. But it's used after this. It shouldn't cause a problem at all. Okay, in that case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, just to double check this, I'm just going to turn off the call to that function so I don't do anything. It could be that there's something else breaking the wire register. In fact, that is what it is. That is definitely what it is. Because we need the wire register to stay the same. That can't, that can't change. Oh, all the beef. No, it's churro. It's supposed to be self mod two. No, no, it's already been stored in a self mod variable somewhere. So we just call it re recalling that value again. Not seeing decals though. Okay, why are we not seeing decals? I feel like there's some other data in the decal that we're we're missing. Uh, let's go and have a look at the decals. See what happens. How long have we got? We've got about five minutes. Over. We've got we've got somewhere to begin with next time. Ah, cannot spawn decal in the scenery. Ah, okay. This is because what it's doing is it's finding a scenery piece. We need to not find a scenery piece. So actually what we need to do is we need to store the previous screen position. This is how the bullets work. Okay. So we'll do that quickly. It's pretty easy to do. So this uh, screen position needs to be stored um not just in here but it needs to also be stored uh how can we do this because we need to grab this value from here okay right so this needs to be stored at uh data dot bullets uh dot screen like that then like that but this one needs this value adding to it as well so it's a bit confusing but we're kind of getting there okay so which means we're best off doing this kind of slightly backwards here so we're going to do this one second and the reason we're going to do this one second is because we may oh no we need to do So I, so I don't know what I'm thinking. The wrong thing, obviously, and that needs to be capital M. And then this needs to be uh I'm gonna indent this slightly just because it's gonna help me kind of understand what I'm doing here. Uh But the problem is we need to only store this if we haven't collided. So this is kind of useless here, actually. So let's get rid of that. Hang on.
Yes, yeah, so basically at this point here. If we get to this exit here, then it's at this point we need to store the previous location. Because we need to make sure that if we if we Yeah, 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 that's right. On, we only store the location if um we if we haven't collided. Because if we have collided, it's pointless as grabbing that screen location, right? A char X, yes. Let's grab that. Okay, so that gives us our last location. So that means then it's not actually screen X that we need to store. It's screen, uh, sorry, MSB. It's that that we need to store. God damn it. We'll get this right in a minute. So that means we don't need to do any add. We just need to load char X. That makes this a bit more efficient, which is good. And this is load char Y. Screen X, screen Y. Yes, we've got char X, we've got char Y. Okay, so we need screen X and screen Y. And the bullets. Uh, let's put this in. Yeah, let's do it here, it doesn't really matter. Get this, once the decals are working, I'm gonna call it a night, so which hopefully they should work after this little change. So the, the reason it was failing was because the decal was trying to spawn inside scenery and we don't want it to spawn inside scenery. What we want it to do is spawn where there is no scenery. So the last space that it was in that didn't have scenery in it. Um, so with that value in place, we can now, when we spawn, we can say, uh, we also need to make sure that those values are reset properly at the beginning. It shouldn't be a problem. We're not going to spawn decals anywhere weird, but um, we might need to think about how that's actually drawn to the screen if it immediately disappears, which it shouldn't do. But just in case it is, we need to we need to deal with that. Okay, so I'm going to put a bit of bit of data in here just to describe what we're doing. So. Uh, So screen lookup self mod now we're storing char right the decal and then this instead of being char x and char y from here is going to be char y does need to be stored actually no we don't need to store x at char y yeah we don't need to do that that actually simplifies things even further as well because now what we do is we grab Boom, there we go. What do you reckon? Do you reckon it's going to work? Didn't even build because it's trying to grab that value. Only can make char y. Where is that? Where is that? And look at that. That's the other cool thing. We're using self mod. Is so once we refactor these out, we now can kind of put these, these values down here. So we do need to store the exit char y and we're just moving that self mod to somewhere else now instead that's kind of cool i like that i'm really so the more and more i use it the more and more i like it and what i do like about it as well is it means that when somebody else has to use this if people are trying to hack at this game they're gonna have lots and lots of problems with it so good I want it to confuse the shit out of people. Uh, data dot bullet. Oh, it's bullets, isn't it? Not bullet.
Well, I mean, other than the fact that I can't freaking jump remove bullet, I can't um, build the code first time. Stop posting on YouTube then. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point actually. So YouTube is uh, is filling up pretty fast. I've got scheduled until kind of after my birthday actually. So my birthday's in two weeks' time. I'll be doing a stream on my birthday hopefully if all if all goes well. Um, but I think I'm I've got I've got upload scheduled until a couple of days after my birthday. So every two to three days there should be a video appearing on YouTube, slowly catching up. The Google Drive is ahead as well. The Google Drive has all the way up to like 56 or 55 or 56. It's only like five or six episodes behind now. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. Yours is on the 12th. Oh, that's awesome. Wait, so that means you get a birthday stream on Nicomo's birthday. I'll be streaming on Nicomo's birthday on the Saturday. And the Tuesday, yeah. And then mine on the, mine on the Tuesday. That's kind of cool. Oh yes, there we go. Ah, that's right. The the decal is generic, so it doesn't matter where it shoots. That looks kind of cool. Right, I'm I'm happy with that. That's not a bad, bad bit of work for the night. Um, it actually means as well that we can do that decal anywhere as well. When the bullet is removed, it's very easy to just drop that uh, in as well. Did you work today with somebody who's tested positive? This is why I'm dreading going back. So we're going back to work, not this week because of the tube strikes, but we're going to go back uh, next week. And I'm just, I'm sure this is going to happen. Anyway, I hope everybody's, um, I hope everybody's well there. So it's Jasmine's birthday on Thursday. Are you serious? Oh dear. Work from home for the win. That, has, uh, that is one of the advantages, I guess, of, of being pinged with it. But yeah, it's just, uh, I have to now sleep on this old... Oh, that's the downside. That's the big downside. Wait, 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 wait. SK, you ain't the one that's got COVID. It's not your fault. She should sleep on the sofa. She's the infected one. She's the one that needs to stay out of the way. Don't tell her I said that and don't tell her where I live. <laughs> I don't know her, but I'm scared of her. <laughs> Uh, you have to stay clear because your heart condition. Yeah, I, I bet. If you got heart condition, definitely. I, I part of me wants to get it so that I can just kind of get it over with. Um, but uh, the other part of me knows that I've got so many little things wrong with me that it could really, really kind of screw up. So I really don't want to. Um, really don't want to risk it. Um, okay, cool. I'm quite pleased with that. I, I managed to get, or we managed to get into some good work from you guys as well. Um, you can't use the NHF. I'd never used it anyway, really. I didn't really go anywhere, to be honest. I'm a bit of a loner, so. Yeah, my my uh, my line manager tested positive. He's been he's been off he's been off work for a week, but I haven't. I mean, he's been working from home anyway, so he's he's not been. You know, he's not been uh, mingling with us or anything, so. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm quite pleased with that. Let's just have a look quick before I log off and we'll find someone to raid. I just want to see what that's done to the code size. Uh, F800, really not bad. So that's two kilobytes exactly that we're using for that at the moment. Um, and really, I wouldn't expect more than a few hundred bytes for the remaining part. We need to get it so that the bullets um, collide with the mace and that the bullets collide with other bullets as well. As far as I can tell, that's going to be really simple. And this is this is testament to having all these systems in place. Um, we really don't have to do an awful lot in order to make things work, right? So we've, we've got these things kind of behaving correctly now. And, you know, decals are decals. It doesn't care where they come from. Decals don't have any, uh, don't have any owner because they don't have any effect on the player. They're just a visual thing. So, but yeah, there you go. I feel feels really good. Yeah. So bullet size. I'll write that down as well. 
So we'll do a couple of checks on Thursday. It really shouldn't take a lot at all. Um, and I think we can move on to this next screen here. This screen's actually going to be quite simple as well. We've just got to set some force fields up. Uh, we've got we've got a couple of force fields, uh, two turrets here. Um, the only thing we do need to be sure, I don't know if these will explode. Yeah, they will. Damn it. All right. The only thing we need to make sure is that there is a, there is a pattern to these. So we're going to add some logic into um, these things. So what I was thinking is um, turrets will, sorry, these, these force fields will have uh, a little bit of additional data, which will tell them um, how to behave. So like... Uh, um, well, it'd be, it'd be more like a control logic. There'll be a control logic section for force fields. It will either be available or not. So, for instance, on, on the screen up there, it's not available, the, the screen up here. It's just a, it's just a force field for now. Um, but if you add a control logic in, it will say things like, turn this one on for this long, this one on for this long, this one on for this long, and turn them off, and, and so on. So you'll be able to get a small string of bytes, basically, uh, which will add constants to so that it's readable as like a mini script within the assembly. Um, so they'll be very easy. Um, uh, yeah, very, very easy kind of, yeah, it will almost be like a little scripting language inside assembly. So we'll use constants to create um, the bytes and you'll just create a list of instructions that says, do this, then do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. So uh, well, what happens if they're active bullets and you leave the screen? That's a very good point. Let's just give that a try. Uh, in theory, they should be getting cleared, I think. Uh, let's just check what the clear function says. But I'm pretty sure they should be getting cleared. They might not be, though. Uh, so it's a good point. So if they're not, then you have to remind me on the next thing. Uh, actually, it looks like they're not. Oh, bullets active count. So the, the active count goes down to zero, but I don't know if that means that they'll... Okay. Well, actually, no, because the code will reset. So, yeah, they should disappear. Let's try it. If anyone wants to buy a present, she wants crispy duck, please. I've not found a good Chinese restaurant around here yet. I need to, I need to do some investigating. I found a really good Turkish place, though. Two of them, in fact. And one of them is, like, literally a two-minute walk. So I don't even have to deliver it or just eat it. I can just go there. Right, see if I can get through this without dying. Probably not. Damn it. Run, 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 run. Oh, I could just go off this way, couldn't I? I don't know why I'm trying to go that way. don't think anything happens, but let's try and... I mean, it blew up before it hit me then. Nothing, it's fine. They clear properly. It clears properly, so... Uh, yeah, let's, let's try it the other way as well. Let's just shoot some of them here. Oh, my God. I do run the risk of making this game more and more difficult for myself. I think I am going to have to have some invincibility modes in here as well. Uh, I blew up by a mine. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, well, I think it's fine. We'll, we'll be doing some testing on this anyway. We're going to have to play through it several times before we're done. But looking good, looking good. I think next stream we should be able to get onto the new screen. Uh, there'll be a, a little bit of work to do on the turrets on the next one, but not too much. Um... So yeah, it should be should be okay, I think. Um, and also we can um, we can tweak all the values in here as well. So as we're playing through the screens, we need to. I kind of need Andy um, Thalamus, Andy, to to kind of play through it um, rather than myself. So you can say if a screen feels too easy or not, and then we can tweak values like the the bullet speeds and things like that. So um, it needs to feel as difficult as the original, even though we've kind of taken some kind of liberties and made the screen smaller we need to make it feel as close to the original as possible and the difficulty curve is going to be one of those things as well if it was difficult to get past the screen on the original it needs to be difficult to get past the screen on this one as well 
uh, regardless of how the screen's arranged. So we need to make sure that that kind of difficulty is still there, even if it means shifting the difficulty from one mechanic to another. So for instance, on the screen with four lasers, the reason that screen has any kind of difficulties because there are four lasers going. Now, if it turns out we have to knock it down to two lasers instead of four, we might be better adding a turret in or doing something just to to make that screen a little bit trickier so it stays the same difficulty. You need to still, you need to feel like it took as much effort as the original to get through. The difficulty curve as a game of games is really, really underestimated. And I think people don't realize that a large part of what makes games feel fun is the curve is is playing uh, playing through a game and getting a little bit further each time and the speed that that happens and the amount that you kind of increase and the amount that you learn each time is something that if it's done right can feel very very rewarding if it's done wrong it can feel terrible and so if a game is is doing well and you want to clone it you have to clone that reward structure you have to clone that difficulty curve and that reward structure uh, likewise as well, Nicomo pointed out that we don't have achievements in this yet, um, so we're going to probably spend some time, I think we'll get a couple more, we'll get a few screens under our belt, and then when we get a little bit bored um, of kind of doing screens, we might take a couple of streams aside just to do some uh, to do some achievements and have a think about how to do those. I've got some ideas for how to do them um, based on the, if, I don't know if you've ever seen retro game achievements, but they have a system for it, we can use a similar system for this. Uh, which means we wouldn't have to check everything every frame we could just cycle through a couple of checks each frame uh when when there's free time it doesn't have to be uh you know it can be the very last thing that's done in the frame uh it can be only if the raster is at a certain point by that time uh and that way we can we can trigger uh, achievements and stuff which would be kind of cool i don't know how they're going to display yet i'm sure we'll come up with something though we might have to uh might have to pause the game or something while the achievements. I don't know how it will work, but we'll, we'll have a think about it anyway. Uh, all right, cool. Right, let's uh, go and find someone to raid. I have not got my raiding stuff up at all, so let me go to find that. Uh... Uh, yeah, I've not got anything up. Oh, damn it. Where's my raid? Raid creator dashboard. There we go. That'll do. Stream manager. That's what I want. Stream manager. Who's on? Who's on? Uh, ah, Neon Ninja Monkey's on. Listen, listen. Uh, who's in the TV? Who's in the TV? Oh, she's the one that plays all the horror games, isn't she? Oh, she's playing Res 2. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll raid Lucinda. All right, fair enough. Okay, I'm going to raid Lucinda. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming along tonight. I will see you all on Thursday. God forbid anything happens. I think we should be all right. Uh, well, World War Three might break out, but other than that, with... Um, Hopefully see you on Thursday. Uh, so let's start the raid now. I, I do keep meaning to do this game uh, in, in stream game. It should be very, very quickly to do. Uh, very quick to do. And I just I, I haven't had the time to do it yet. I've been busy building these freaking shells all day today. Um, but when I do, um, I'll try and get them in as quickly as possible. And you can start playing those. All right, cool. I shall see you all on Thursday if everything's okay. If not, well, see you whenever. Okay, take care, guys. Bye. But I love watching people do it. Hey, Shell and